Just a bit east on Interstate 80, LP and Morris Conference foes meeting again for the second straight year in the playoffs. And Mike, I did my math and uh, I believe this will be the fifth time these two teams have played in two calendar years. They played each other in the spring of the COVID yep. shortened season, played each other twice last year and now twice this year. Yeah, it's hard to believe that they're getting very, very familiar with the uh, Morris football team. And uh, the Cavs did take one of those games, if I'm not yep. mistaken, uh, in a tight uh, nail biter there at the end of the game. So uh, I think the Cavs would love to see a game like that when it's, you know, within seven points with uh, in the fourth quarter. So let's see what the Cavs can do uh, tonight versus Morris. Obviously, Morris comes in uh, the better seeded team at seven and two. The Cavaliers at five and four. Morris, a four seed LP, a 13 seed in Class 5A. The winner of this one will play the winner of uh, Troy and Centralia, a 5-12 game, uh, two teams from the southern part of the state. Again, uh, Morris and LP, we're going to start right at 7 o'clock tonight, which obviously is uh, unusual, but there's no freshman and sophomore game. You're listening to the WeTech Wealth Management pregame show. If it's time to pregame or regame your retirement, the financial professionals at WeTech can help you design a winning plan Call WeTech Wealth Management today. We're going to go ahead and take our first break. When we come back, we'll have our uniform description. Mike will deliver the weather of the game. We'll also have the keys of the game and the coin toss. WeTech Wealth Management pregame show. Jeremy Aiken, Mike Porter from Morris High School. Cavaliers and Morris postseason football coming up. For plumbing, heating, cooling, generators, and appliances, think Grazier's Plumbing and Heating in McNabb. Whether you run cold or hot, Grazier's will make sure your home is always just the right temperature. And for those cold winter nights, or when the power's out, and Grazier's does boilers too. Gotta call Grazier's 8221 Gergovich Family Chiropractic in LaSalle's a proud supporter of high school sports. Dr. Gergovich utilizes the most advanced technology to provide effective care for men, women, and children of all ages. Whether you're getting down in a three-point stance, getting down off a ladder, or getting down on a dance floor, you need a chiropractor on your health care team. Search Gergovich Family Chiropractic today to see all the ways having Dr. Gergovich on your team can help you be happier, healthier, and pain-free.
Thunder Coach's interview and injury status update. When your car gets banged up, call the Sal Body and Fender. You can also call them for 24-hour towing at 815-223-0598. Cavalier uniform description is brought to you by Family Pride Cleaners, proud LP alum. Family Pride Cleaners takes pride in their work, just like the Cavaliers do. Follow Family Pride Cleaners on Facebook today. Cavaliers back on the road once again. That means uh, white shirts. Green pants, green numbers with the red trim, the green helmets. Morris in their home, not quite red. Would it be more maroon? Yeah, burgundy-ish uh, red. Yeah, burgundy yeah. and uh, I guess kind of gold. Gold pants, yeah. Gold pants with uh, the red you-know-what logo. They've gotten rid of the nickname but still have the same logo. Uh, time now for Town & Country Services weather of the game. And, uh, partner, you want to give that? Yes, game time weather is brought to you by Town & Country Services. Whether it's hot, cold, dark, or light, Town & Country Services is doing whatever it takes 24-7. Go to townandcountries.com to find out more. Uh, basically, it's 51 degrees here at kickoff, uh, 7 p.m. almost exactly. And by 9 o'clock, it's going to be a chilly 45. So no rain in the forecast. Uh, just a beautiful night for football once again for the Cavs. And we're underway, and there's a deep kick by Seth Adams. And Zwiers has it at the 5. And he may go all the way, the 50, the 40. Wow, a 95-yard kick return to begin the game by A.J. Zwiers. 
No flags on the play, and uh, they've had some returns this year. Wow. Yeah, that's not uh, how you really want to start uh, your 5A playoff run here with a kickoff uh, uh, return on your kickoff team. So puts the Cavs in a whole uh, <laughs> uh, 14 seconds into the game. So Seth Adams just shy of the uh, end zone for a touchback, and Morris made him pay, bringing it all the way back. Tonight's opening kickoff, by the way, brought to you by Eureka Savings Bank. Since 1885, Eureka Savings Bank has been proud to be a part of this community, helping people just like you. Eureka Savings Bank member FDIC. So pretty much untouched was Weirs for Morris. 95 yards on the uh, kick return to get this game going. And here's the PAT attempt for Morris. Esteban C. Fuentes adds the PAT. Uh, as you can figure, uh, tonight's coin toss won by Morris. Tonight's coin toss brought to you by Hometown National Bank. Don't leave your financial future up to a coin toss. Let the folks at Hometown National Bank help. Well, Mike, uh, we'll go ahead and still do our keys of the game. <laughs> Down 7-0, well, 14 seconds into the game. I think the they game. just changed, my, uh, changed the locks on my key to the game here. So <laughs> The key to the game tonight brought to you by James Hardy in Peru. The key to your new career and a $5,000 sign-on bonus is waiting for you at James Hardy. For all the details and to apply, visit James Hardy online today. And uh, does that kickoff change things? Yes. Well, I was going to say, you know, the Cavs can't let Morris uh, get off to a fast start, yeah. uh, let the crowd get into the game. Uh, keep it close. You know, they were 7-0 almost at halftime last time they played. So I was hoping that was going to be the case here and do the same thing. But I guess it's 7 nothing now, so we'll just have to keep the Morris scoreless for the rest of the half. <laughs> easy, easy, easier said, said than, than done, done yes, no but, doubt. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot to James Hardy bringing you our key to the game. So Morris with a kickoff. It'll be taken at about the 10 by Caleb Burrell. Caleb's at the 15. He's going to be stop shy of the 20 at about the 17-yard line. So here comes the LP offense. We shall see who will be at quarterback. They finished with Mason Lynch at quarterback last week, and he led them to a uh, touchdown drive against Caneland. Coach Jose Medina mentioning in the uh, interview that uh, both guys would see time at quarterback, that being Mason Lynch and Brendan Boudreaux. And it looks like they'll start with Lynch at quarterback. And Boudreaux will be uh, slotted out as one of the backs. Yeah, and Lynch provided quite a spark when he came in in the fourth quarter, so we'll see what he can do here. I'm sure Moore saw the game film on that, but uh, the running back just got thrown in the backfield. Hand off to Roman Ole, and he is tackled for a big loss. Making that tackle for Morris was Nick Perry, 6'2", 290 senior lineman. Uh, he's an all-conference top, uh, top lineman. And a uh, big loss just like that for the Cavaliers. Loss of three, maybe four. Waiting to see when they mark it officially. Loss of four yards. Yeah, I was going to say it's kind of hard to see. but For Roman Ole. So uh, a tough start, to say the least, for the Cavaliers. Kick return, touchdown for Morris, and the first running play for LP goes for four-yard loss. And now we see something new for LP. Lynch out of the shotgun. Yeah, that's a good snap by the center. Mason um, is going to tuck help. it down and yep, run. He's got a lot of space in the center of the field. And Ooh, he takes puts a his big head hit. down and gets out to about the 35-yard line. That is what Mason will bring to the table at quarterback. He has breakaway speed. Yeah, and all the way out to the 34-yard 30, line. About 20 so. yards on that carry. For Mason Lynch, he dropped back, went to pass, and tucked the ball under and got 20 yards on the carry. Yeah, he took a big hit by number 20, Brett Evanson from Morris. So uh, hopefully that doesn't affect him later on here. First and 10 LP as they get a first down on the Lynch run. There's a pitch to Connor Lorden. Connor gets out past the 35 to about the 36. I give Connor two, maybe three yards on that play. Yeah, we saw Connor run for the first time last week, um, and he did a really nice job, actually. So. Um, nice to have uh, different kinds of running backs for the Cavs. Well, and you don't want to use a cliche, but, I mean, this is it. It's playoff football. Yep. So literally all hands on deck. We'll see uh, guys maybe playing different positions that, uh, that they haven't played this year. But you got to get your best 11 out there at any one time. Yep. So Lorden got two yards on the carry. Second and eight. Lynch back under center for the Cavaliers. Ella Meyer in the backfield. And uh, they hand it off. Roman Ole trying to turn the corner. Brady puts his head down, and always a collision when Roman only runs the ball. Gets yeah. it out to about the 37, maybe two more yards on that carry. 
Yeah, he's a uh, he's got a little punch. He's a small uh, uh, status for a running back, but he's very quick. So uh, he took a big hit by the linebacker from Morris. So uh, two yard gain on that play. So third and somewhat manageable seven. Yeah, they'll mark the ball just inside the Cavalier 37 yard line. Three minutes into this game, Morris leads seven nothing over LP Lynch back in the shotgun. Mason going to drop back and pass, looking towards uh, the sideline, oh, going, going deep, deep, and he just overthrew Boudreaux. He had two Morris players on him, and a nice throw by Lynch, but just led Boudreaux a little too much. And the Cavaliers, after a first down run by Mason Lynch, will have to punt it away to the Morris. And interesting, Mike, it is not Malik Madrigal going back to punt. It is Seth Adams. Yeah, Madrigal's been punting pretty much All the year. whole season. He may be not that first game, but uh, we know uh, he can. Uh, Adams can kick the ball oh, for yeah. sure, so we'll see what he can do uh, punting tonight. Didn't see Malik out there on offense either on that first possession. Adams with the punt, and it's going to take a nice LP bounce, and Zwiers is going to let yeah, it go. let it go. I was going to say he was going to try to pick it yep. up, but – I thought he, he I thought twice about that. So Very nice punt by Seth Adams. It is down at the Morris 15-yard line. 8.47 to go in the first. It is 7 to nothing. Morris over LP. Again, if you missed it, opening play of this game, a 95-yard kickoff return by Zwiers of Morris. And I was looking back. He was uh, a tough one to handle for LP earlier in the season. He had a 52-yard catch and a 32-yard run. Really, him and Yard yep, did all right. the damage yep. for Morris. And this is the uh, strength of Cavs' uh, team here on the defense, so hopefully they can hold Morris' offense to minimal gains here. So it looks like Yard. Yard off right tackle, gets stopped shy of the 20, marking about eh, probably near the 20. Gain of close to five. Ashton Yard, and uh, Morris going to go no huddle, it would appear here. Second and six at their own 19-yard line. LP doing some last-second shifting on defense. Yep. I keep moving. There's a lot of motion and whatnot. So. Weirs goes in motion. There's Ashton Yard. First down to Morey. Oh, he fumbled. It, but it went right to his teammate. Oh. Wow. Popped yep. in the air and went yep. right to his teammate. Yep. <laughs> that was uh, Gage Phillips. And Morris going to get a big gain out to the 32-yard line. Well, when you're rated number one at one point in the season, seven and two, you tend to get those bounces and breaks. Yep. Yep, that would have been a big break for the yeah. Cavs for sure. Button in the shotgun for Morris. Weirs goes in motion, and he's going to get the handoff. Turns the corner and going to be Ooh, tackled good tackle down. tackle there on the far side of the field. Looked like Mason Lynch with the say, tackle. Lynch made the tackle on Weirs. Yep. yep. Still hold, five yard gain. Hold your breath whenever 23 and 24 get the ball for Morris. If you're LP, that's a gain of probably five out to the uh, Morris 37-yard line. Again, Morris working a no-huddle offense here. Zwiers goes in motion again. They go Ashton Yard, or actually a different running back that time. And uh, he's got a first down. That was 36. Jacob Schwartz. Yeah, he gets a full head of ski steam by the time he gets that ball, and he's through the uh, first line and without being touched, so Cavs going to have to tighten that up. Morris quickly again up to the line of scrimmage. First and 10, Morris at their own 46. They lead the Cavs 7 to nothing. Zwiers goes in motion. Ooh, now he's Keeper keep by the quarterback, Button, and he's going to be stopped short of the 50. Rowicki was near the bottom of the pile. Rodriguez as well for LP. Gain of about three for their junior quarterback, Carter Button. And we are down under seven minutes to go in this first quarter. Seven nothing Morris. Three receivers set for Morris. In motion again is Weirs. And they'll go Ashton Yard off left tackle. Medina was there. Also there for LP. Looked like number 59, Creed McCormick. Just shy of a first down run. Well, like you said, anytime, that was actually Schwartz again. Yeah, anytime uh, Schwartz or Yard now carry the ball, it's uh, tough to get down. Third and one now coming up for Morris. They have the ball at the LP 45-yard line. LP brings in a little more size with Belsky. Oh, oh wow. You know, I'd say that's a false start on the offense. <laughs> Number 76 is at the linebacker, Aiden King. 
ran, ran over, over a Cavs uh, player there, but <laughs> uh, he was a little early. That's the definition of a false start. And I'm moving back to third down and six now. Kind of like uh, Major League when he was uh, just <laughs> a bit outside. Yes. That was a uh, quite early jump on that play. So we'll move it right back to midfield in the middle of the uh, M here at Morris High School. Right at the 50, it's third down and six for Morris. They go with three receivers. Again, Zwiers is the receiver to watch out for. Button, the quarterback, looking towards the sideline for the play. We're halfway through the first quarter. It's going to be a big stop for LP. Button is rolling right, looking, throwing towards the oh, sideline. Nice, nice play. By play. The defense over there. That was all season long. He's been making big plays. Caleb Burrell knocks the ball away from the intended receiver. Yeah, and I was wondering if it was going to be four down territory here for Morris at the 50-yard uh, line, but it looks like they're going to punt and try to get uh, LP deep in their own territory. So Back deep will be uh, Mason Lynch, and back to punt for Morris is uh, their Mr. Everything, A.J. Zwiers. Yeah, we can't assume that it's going to be no. a punt here with no. him uh, touching the ball, so really got to pay attention to where he's at. Right at midfield, Zwiers does get the punt away. Angling away from Lynch, and it's going to take a nice Morris bounce. Yep, no return. And deaden at about the 10-yard line. So LP will have a long way to go here inside their own 10-yard line. But the defense does come up with a stop, aided by a false start penalty against Morris. LP will take this drive over at their own 9-yard line, first down and 10. Yeah, that was a good uh, set by the defense, even though uh, Morris got three first downs in that sequence, but they were able to stop him at the midfield. So... Um, Offense has just got to do something here. All year we've been kind of saying yeah, that. So. Yeah. Check our first Subway scoreboard update of the night. Subway in Spring Valley, Peru, LaSalle, Marseilles, and Oglesby. Enjoy a sandwich made with freshly baked bread and fresh ingredients right in front of your eyes. Subway, eat fresh. At halftime, Princeton 35-6 over Piatone. Yeah, we knew that one was going to get out of hand uh, <laughs> you, pretty quickly. You so. would assume, yeah. And it looks like Mason Lynch still out there at quarterback for the Cavs. Ooh, a lot of and, bodies up center here. And so. he's got it. Still running. Mason Man, kept it. He got, got a first down. Boy, out, close to, yeah, he's got a first down. Up say, to the yeah, I don't know how he got through there because there were bodies everywhere in that uh, center of the field. But Lynch squeaked through there for 10 yards. First and 10 LP. They get it some breathing room. That drive started at their own nine. Ball now at uh, the LP 19-yard line. Going to be about five minutes to go in this first quarter when this ball is snapped to Mason Lynch. Ellermeyer in the backfield for LP. And they're going to hand it, it off to the first man through. I believe that would be Ellermeyer off left tackle. Yeah, it looks like a short gain here. Maybe three yards on that play. So Peyton's first carry of the night, number 20 off left tackle. Yeah, give him three. Second down and seven coming up for LP. Boudreau mm -hmm. and Romanoli coming back into the game. Again, no uh, Malik Madrigal for the Cavaliers on offense. Yeah, he had a couple of good games there in the yep. center uh, part of the schedule for the Cavs. Simmons and Starkey are the wideouts for LP. Lynch under center. Second down and seven. Romanoli goes in motion. They'll run the option. Mason Lynch is being uh, oh. tracked down by three or four Morris defenders and maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he didn't have much shot over there on that side of the field. So it'll be third and long for LP. Now they give him two yards on the carry. They spot oh. it uh, just shy of the 24-yard line. So the Cavalier is looking at a third and five. So I'd say this is the kind of where they want to be on third down. If they're going to have, uh, you know, yards to go, five and under would be fantastic. Yeah. Lynch is back in the shotgun. Mason looking to pass, throwing. Oh, and it looks like a Boudreau good catch. Had a defender all oh. over him, and they say he couldn't hold on to it. Oh. No argument from the LP sideline, it doesn't appear. It's kind of hard to tell from where we're at. Hose up. Coach Medina has given the official. Will Knapp on the coverage for Morris. We couldn't see it. It was no. right in front of. The LP sideline, so uh, it goes incomplete. He had enough yardage for the first down, so Cavaliers will go three and out. Yeah, I think the defender may have had his hand in uh, Boudreaux's chest there, so maybe he knocked it out down on the ground out here. 
Back deep for Morris as Knapp and Zwiers, and uh, Adams will punt inside his 10. And Seth gets oh. another nice big punt. Nice spiraled punt. Taking about the 32 by Knapp. It's at the 35, 40, 45, 50, 40 of LP. He has blockers. Wow, another big return all the way down to about the LP 20. Hmm. So, so far, the story of this game has been kick coverage. Morris returning a kick for a touchdown, and now they just return him to punt for about 40 yards. That was Will Knapp. Yeah, sometimes you uh, regret a great punt like that because yeah. it outkicks the coverage, and he was able to get blockers in front of him, and he was running along the sideline. Uh, and he's seemed to be quite an athlete out there, so LP's going to have to really tighten up here on the defense. So just like that, Morris is at the 20-yard uh, line of LP. First and 10. And off to Schwartz, off left tackle, 10. And pulls his way inside the 10-yard line. First down run for Morris. Again, that was Jacob Schwartz. He's a, he's a kind of a bigger, stronger runner than Ashton Yard. Yeah, he's definitely a And Schwartz is going to stay in there. First and goal, Morris at the LP7. So Morris 15 yards on that play. Inside the Illinois Valley Credit Union red zone. Schwartz again. Goes up the middle, still spinning, and he'll be stopped short of the goal line, but he got down about the five. Uh, quick moving offense for Morris. They will bring in two substitutions, though, to give the LP defense a little bit of a breather yeah, I here. Say they're going to have a short rest here. Be second and goal at the Cavalier five after the big punt return by Knapp. Again, that has been the story so far. Kick return and punt return yep. for Morris. Full house backfield for Morris. They hand it off Ashton Yard up the middle, and he has stopped just short hmm, okay. right near the goal line. Couldn't quite see who pulled him back, but it'll be third and one, third and goal from the one for Morris. Counting down about two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Again, full house backfield for Morris. Button under center, and he was leaning forward. Yeah, I was going to say, boy. LP screaming. He, the quarterback was leaning forward. Did somebody get it? Yep, they did. They did. The one uh, official got it. Yeah, the quarterback was going before the ball even snapped, and no moving back five yards. There's no doubt did about they that. Call, they called the penalty there? Oh, yeah, the far okay. official, surprisingly. All right, I was going to say, he was, yeah, yeah, he was leaning forward before the ball snapped. So. And the LP coaching staff reacted right away for good reason. So it'll be a third and goal back at the six now for Morris. As their junior quarterback button was definitely leaning forward. Yeah, based on how close they were, he would have not had to do that. Yeah. I think he would have got in regardless, but. Third and goal at the six. Button going to pitch it to Ashton Yard. Looking for blocks, turns it inside and gets in for the touchdown. Oh, still using the nickname. There's a six yeah, yard, watch that. Six yard touchdown run by Ashton Yard. As Morris, despite the false start penalty, scores with 156 to go here in the first. And again, it was set up by a huge punt return. First touchdown, a 95 yard kick return. So special teams. Yeah, I was gonna say we didn't think about the uh, special teams being the big factor here in the first quarter, so. Here's the extra point coming up for Morris to make it a two-possession game. Looks to be good, and it is good. So 14 to nothing. The score will come right back. LP getting the football on your home for Cavalier postseason football. 103.9 WLPO. Full Circle Industrial knows there are many things that can stop your business cold. That's why they offer a variety of products and services to keep you going. Which of these two pieces of equipment do you think will run the longest? FCI not only fixes your equipment, they can find and fix the problem before breakdown happens. And speaking of cold, FCI is proud to offer these de-icer and ice prevention solutions. Search Full Circle Industrial in Oglesby and see everything FCI can do for you today.
And the kickoff goes to Kayla Burrell for the Cavaliers. He returns it out to about the 23 yard line. So third possession of the night for LP. A minute 50 left to go here in the first and the Cavaliers trailing 14 to nothing over Morris. Again, the story so far, a 95 yard kick return and a uh, about a 45 yard punt return uh, yep. for Morris of uh, led to the two scores. Yeah, and we basically have just a rushing game here. It looks like from the scoreboard we have 65 yards rushing for Morris and 34 yards rushing for LP. So uh, not uh, passing game is not a, uh, an issue here today so far. Well, the Cavaliers have went to the air. They have. Times, they just yeah. have an incomplete. And speaking of which, Lynch is going to throw. Oh, and tipped. The, yep, he was looking for Starkey. But uh, heads up play by Luke Brown of Morris who knocked the pass down. Starkey was open in the middle of the field. Incomplete for LP, second down and 10. So Lynch is 0 for 3, throwing the ball so far tonight. I know Starkey was a uh, heavy target last yep. game too. Uh, nothing was completed to him, but he was definitely thrown to. Second and 10 LP at their own 24-yard line, trailing 14-0 to the fourth-seeded Morris team. There was some question late whether Morris would be 4A or 5A, and they bumped him up to 5A. And Lynch going to keep it. And Mason goes forward up to about the 28, maybe the 29-yard line. Gives four, maybe five on the quarterback keeper. That looks like they're giving him five on that run. Coming in is Romanoli off the sideline on this third down play for the Cavs. Boudreau and Simmons out there as wideouts for the Cavaliers. His wing backs. Simmons will be the lone wide, wide out for LP. On the right hand side. Third and five Cavaliers. Lynch under center. Ellemeyer behind him in the backfield, and LP is going to have to call a timeout. 104 to go here in the first quarter. It's been a pretty clean quarter here. There's only been one uh, penalty with the false start. Yeah, on Morris, Morris so. is that false start. Yeah. So that's uh, a good thing for the Cavaliers. I know they've had an issue with penalties the last couple games. Also be looking for an Ottawa score tonight. The Pirates are on the road at Mohamed Seymour. Uh, Hall is at Springfield Sacred Heart Griffin, a game you can hear on 96.5 The Wolf. Sycamore playing tomorrow night at home against the Westinghouse in 5A. Sycamore, of course, the number one seed. Caneland is playing right now. They're a... Uh, 6A team, and uh, despite being 6-3, and three, they got a home game against another 6-3 and three team, Riverside Brookfield. So uh, that's a nice draw for Cambridge. Yeah, that was a pretty a home fortuitous at... uh, win last week. <laughs> that was a big win for them it over LP. very big yeah. win. 6-3 and three teams are very rarely getting a yeah. home, home game, and now they play a second 6-3 and three team. We'll see if maybe we come across the score on that one. We're back after the first time out taken of the night by LP. It's 14-0 Morris. Third down and five coming up for the Cavaliers at their own 29-yard line. Lynch is in the shotgun. Ooh, looks and like a double a handoff reverse. to Boudreau. Uh, Boudreau's got Nobody get. was open, but Brendan tucks it down and gets the first down. Cavs so, had a game uh, play like that last no. week, two weeks ago. They yeah. had a little reverse, but uh, Boudreau didn't find anyone open, so he definitely kept the ball, which is great. Out to about the 36-yard line. Gain of seven for Boudreau. So first and 10 Cavaliers under a minute to play here in the first quarter. The offense now is, it's not all, uh, three first downs for Morris, two for LP. Yeah. Time of possession is close. It's just been uh, the return game. Two big yep. returns have been the big difference in this game. Lynch back under center for LP. And Mason hands it off. There's Madrigal off left tackle. Malik pushing forward. There he goes. He's getting about seven yards yeah. on that play. Madrigal well out past the 40, out to about the 43-yard line. So uh, it looked like he sat out much of this first quarter, but uh, Madrigal in with a big run. Yeah, give Malik seven yards on that carry, and that might be the last play of yep. this first quarter. Looks like three seconds left, though. And that is it. We've played a quarter for Morris. The Cavaliers have dug themselves a hole, but they just picked up their uh, third first down of the night. Let's see if the Cavaliers can put a drive together. We've played a quarter for Morris. It's Morris 14, LP nothing. Back with more Cavalier playoff football after this on 103.9. 
WLPO. Come see your friends at First State Bank. There's a certain satisfaction you get when you know you have a friend to turn to. You have a place to go. Year after year, day after day. When you need a helping hand, we're along the way. Come see your friends at First State Bank. Member FDIC. Welcome to KC Marketing, your digital marketing agency. KC Marketing specializes in providing affordable online solutions for your business. From graphic design and social media marketing to custom website development. Put the power of KC Marketing to work for you. Search KC Marketing Agency now to get started. Thursday night games uh, up in the city. They have Thursdays. Right. In yeah, the they uh, obviously run out of officials, so they have to yeah. play them Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And the city yep. has so many teams. So I think, uh, like you said, the playoffs, I think it's either Friday or Saturday. A lot more Friday games than there used to be. Yes, that's for sure. absolutely. Second down and three. Oh, oh an LP is going to have a false offense. start. So it'll be second down and eight. Yeah, Roman Oli was in motion, but the uh, Starkey it looked like from the end spot. On the outside, uh, false start there. So five yard penalty for the Cavs. So that was about as obvious as Morris's false start earlier. Yep. Uh, Starkey did not run over a Morris player, though. No. Like, <laughs> Morris's lineman ran over an LP defender. So it'll be second and eight. First penalty of the night for LP. It comes at the uh, beginning of the second quarter. No time yet off. Just still 12 minutes. Lynch under center. He's going to pitch it to Madrigal. Malik puts his head down and gets maybe two or three out to about the 39-yard line. So Maybe a yard, it looks like, on that. They just gave him one. They mark it at the 39. Third and seven coming up. Yep, gain of a yard. See if LP goes back to the air. They've yet to complete a pass. Mason Lynch has been quarterback so far the whole night. Yeah, Boudreaux's been the quarterback the entire season, but Lynch has just got a different different kind of game. Yeah. Three receivers here, it looks like. And Starkey and Simmons out to the left of Lynch. Lynch in the shotgun for LP. Straight drop back pass for Mason, and he's in trouble. Going to run. And Mason oh. at the 45 to 50. And he's across midfield. Down to the Morris 46-yard line. So there you go. The explosiveness of Mason Lynch. 15 yards on that play. So first down run by Mason Lynch. First time uh, LP, I believe, has gotten into the Morris yes. side of the field yep. tonight. First and 10 Cavs at the Morris 46. 14 nothing Morris. Cavs, though, on the move. And uh, they will get the ball to start the second half. Lynch under center, Madrigal the back. And Malik. Oh, go I, oh no, he got it. Yeah, almost was a fumble. <laughs> I looked at that. that he was got a full head of steam and was almost by Lynch. Yeah. Yeah, I was worried about that too. Malik gets it down to the 40. There's been a few plays this year where uh, the exchange has been fumbled. Yeah, I thought that was uh, going on the ground at that point. Give him six on the carry. Second down and four for the Cavs at the Morris 40. Cavaliers trying uh, for a long drive here. They now have more total yards on the night than Morris. Say Morris had 12 guys in the field. The guy gets off the field yep. the very last second. There's Madrigal again. Oh. Uh, let's see if they give him forward progress so for at least a couple. He got a, a yard or two before he got pushed back. Yeah, inside the 40. So it looks Gain like. Gain of one. Yeah, maybe one. <laughs> Down to the 39. Third and three coming up for LP. Got to believe this is four down territory for the Cavs. Yeah, at this point, I would think so. Morris with another late substitution. In the NFL, Rodgers would have hurried up and snapped yep. it and get that penalty. Free play. 
Mason under center for LP. He's going to keep it. And oh, and, gonna, oh, there's a penalty flag yeah, in the play. Yeah, I think it's going to go against the Cavs. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, you think it's holding, although it's in the holding backfield. Holding motion. Yeah. Legal motion on the Cavaliers. Yeah, legal motion. Yep. So yep. five-yard mark off on the Cavs. It'll be third and eight now. As uh, Lynch kept it and got hit hard there, and the play didn't in, end up mm -hmm. really counting. Yeah, it's too bad he had to take that big hit. Third and eight for LP now. Well, and you're looking at if you're Mason Lynch, you're a senior, so this is week one. My guess is he wouldn't be out there playing every down at running back or quarterback because he's so valuable. Yep, everywhere. But yep. you got to just go for it all tonight. Two quick penalties here in the second quarter for the Cavs. Yeah. So third and eight, Burrell will line up as a receiver along with Starkey, along with Boudreaux. So three receivers for the Cavs. Lynch in the shotgun. Third and eight, Mason looking to pass. Up, nope, going Throwing deep again. Throwing long to Burrell, and it's incomplete. He had a real good coverage out there. It was uh, Sam Metesky on the coverage for Morris. Yeah, the uh, he had a good uh, inside look for the defender, so a very tough play for Burrell to catch that ball. Looks like LP is going to punt and try to pin Morris deep here. If you're Seth Adams, I would think you would hope to try to angle it out of bounds. Yes. Don't want any part of Zweers returning this punt or nap, either one. It looks nope. like Zweers is back there. Yeah, well, uh, I'd say this is going to go out of bounds, I would imagine. Adams is standing just outside his own 40. Fourth and eight for the Cavs. No uh, rush brought on by Morris. Adams has plenty of time to get the punt away. Mm. And it's going to be returnable inside the 10. And there is a flag. Oh, a flag so we'll play, see if it's so. a hold or a block in the back. He's still on his feet. Wow, still running. another big return. Zwiers is still going. But I think it's going to come back. He got all the way out near the 50-yard line. Yeah, the Cavs had a couple opportunities to tackle him, but he just would not go down. If you're LP, you just got to kick it out of bounds now. Yeah. You can't No afford. sense uh, having him touch the ball on the no. kickoff game. The flag was thrown right away, right away uh, yep. when he started running off field. So from the spot of the foul, it'll move Morris back pretty deep. Yeah, they're going to be inside the uh, 15 yep. at least, if not inside the 10. They didn't quite hear if it was probably a block in the back, usually on punt returns, either a hold or a block in the back. And, uh, yeah, they're going to move him back inside the 10. Down yeah, to the 7, 6. 6, yeah, 6, six yard, yard line. line. Yeah, so good opportunity here for the Cavs. Yeah, maybe make a cause a turnover here perhaps. Sacred Heart Griffin, 27 nothing over Hall. Ten minutes left to go in the second quarter. What a monumental task for Hall there, having to face Sacred Heart Griffin. Yeah, one of the top teams in the state regardless of yeah. class for sure. And there's a handoff uh, to Redinger for Morris, his first carry of the night. Gets it out past the 10. Yep, Maybe four yards four on the carry. Five yards on that Yeah, play. give him five. Second and five, Morris at their own 12-yard line. Yeah, that was another name we called quite a bit in those uh, last game against LP. Right back up the middle with Schwartz this time, and uh, he has pushed back. Creed McCormick was there for LP. Just one yard on the carry, so uh, quickly Morris looking at a third down here, third and four inside their own 15-yard line. Big opportunity for the Cavs yep. here. Uh, don't jump off sides. Watch the ball. Don't jump on the snap here. So Third and four, Morris at their own 13. Back in the shotgun is Button. And Button going to hand it off to Zwiers, and he breaks free. Turns it back inside. Wow. Just Oh, he got it. Finally there. got smacked, but man, he just evades tacklers out to the 29 yard line. Gain of 16 on the third down. Uh, the jet sweep to Zweers. He goes in motion almost every play. Yep. And that time they handed it off to him. And as Mike mentioned, uh, he got his bell rung, but he's okay. Well, he doesn't want to go out of bounds. He was no. finding, trying to keep in the playing field and try to get more yards, but he got popped there by somebody. Just like that, a drive that started at their own six. Morris has moved it out to their 29-yard line. 
Button hands it off to Schwartz up the middle and he's out past the 35. Looked like McCormick was there again for the Cavaliers. Schwartz has been a tough runner. They mark it at the 35, give him six. And Morris does not allow you to make defensive substitutions, no huddle offense. Second and four for Morris. Button hands it off. There's Ashton Yard. He's got the first down. I'll pass the 40. He was tackled by Antonio Rodriguez. Yard with his first carry yeah, since the first quarter. Mm -hmm. Haven't called his name for a while. No, at Rodriguez, we, uh, it was the first time we'd called him tonight, and he's been a big factor on the defense. Seven-yard run, first down for Yard in Morris. Button in the shotgun. He's going to pass, throwing it out. There's Weirs. Turns it inside, 50, 45, first down. They just quickly threw it out to Zwiers and uh, he gets the first down. Down to the LP 45 yard line, gain of about 13. Button just took one step back, threw it out to Zwiers and he got by a couple defenders. Yeah, all you had to do was get the ball in his hands and he's, uh, he's going. Only a junior. Gonna be hearing Button and Zwiers next Ju year as well. I say junior to junior there. Yep. Button going to hand it off to a yard up the middle. And, uh, boy, if it wasn't for, it looked like Boudreaux got a, went for a ride. Yard gets a first down. What an impressive drive here for Morris. Again, they started at their own six, and they're down to the LP 33-yard line now. Under six minutes to play in the second quarter. Yeah, Yard is definitely a load. Uh, Boudreaux was going for a ride on that play. Button will hand it back off. I think it's Schwartz this time. And he's just following his big guys. He just kind of high. He got, no, it's actually Yard. Yep, Yard with uh, Creed McCormick on his back. And we got a timeout LP. Yeah, they're, they're struggling. Morris has not let up on this drive, and LP's got to call a timeout to try to, give, to try to give their defense a little bit of a break. They've been running no huddle offense, and uh, man, Morris, this has been their most impressive drive of the night, safe to say. Yeah, like you said, they started on their six, and they're yeah. at the LP, what, 19 it looks like? And Inside the 20. And it's only taken them maybe a minute or two, and not by passing the ball. No, they had that one pass, um, of course, to Zwiers, uh, yeah. but that was 13 yards, yards but uh, otherwise it's been all on the ground. Yeah, just like that, Morris is now up to 124 yards on the ground. Yeah, this drive has definitely padded their stats here, so Cavs defense is going to have to figure something out. Pieto, or, uh, Princeton going to have a running clock the rest of the way. They lead 49-6 to six over Piatone in the third. So you would think the next game for Princeton would be on a sat next Saturday yeah. more than likely. I don't know. Uh, home or away, we don't know. Well, it depends if if in the 8-9 game, or the 8-9 uh, yeah, game, if, if the, the nine lower seed, seed wins, wins, then, then Princeton would, would have it. to go there. Sure. Yep. Yep. And then would it be up to them to decide if they play yeah. Friday or Saturday? Yep. St. Beat, of course, we'll have on WLPO tomorrow at 2 against Forreston. Yeah, it should be another nice uh, day for that game, too, yeah. I would imagine, tomorrow afternoon. It's always a nice setting at uh, the academy on a... Hopefully sunny Saturday afternoon. We're back in action, and Button oh, gonna going to throw deep. to the end zone. There's a defender and back there. And it's into the back of the end zone, caught but out of bounds. Yep. Nope. Burrell yeah, had uh, it, the coverage. <laughs> Receiver showed everyone he had the ball, yeah. but he was uh, three or four yards out of bounds. Looked like, uh, trying to see who that receiver was. He was way in the far corner of the end zone, Button. Yeah, it's kind of hard Threw to see what to his him. number is. Looks like maybe Matt Stark, number 18. Yep. It's incomplete. Try to get a senior a uh, touchdown here in a playoff game. Second down and 10, Morris. Ball spotted at the LP. 19-yard line as Morris is in the Illinois Valley Credit Union red zone. Ooh, someone's got a girl yeah. of yards jersey there. And still hard to bring him down. It was actually Schwartz, 36. It's hard to tell him and Yard apart. They both run very hard. Yeah, and, Mo and Morris does a lot of motion yeah. and uh, trick, you know, handoff here, you know, fake handoff here. So 
It's very oh. difficult for the defense to know who's actually carrying the ball. Only two yards on the carry. It'll be third down and eight for Morris. See if LP can hold Morris to a field goal attempt. Button going to roll left. Always Looking good. center of the end zone. Caught. And Zwiers gets in for the touchdown. That's that's him again. Number yep. 23, A.J. Zwiers got man-to-man -man coverage against Boudreau. And he scores on the touchdown. How many yards did you have on that one? 17-yard touchdown pass. All right, 17 yards. Zwiers from Button. LP forced him on a third and long, but they got Zwiers man-to-man -man coverage, and Morris will take that all night long. Yeah, the quarterback was rolling right, and Zwiers was just running along uh, the back of the end zone line right with the quarterback, and he was able to get free from Boudreau. Kick is up, and it is good for Morris. 21 to nothing now, Morris, over LP. Now, that was a very, very impressive drive. Morris started that drive at their own six-yard line. Yeah, two passes, both is Weirs for 30 yards, the rest uh, running the ball. So very impressive, 94-yard drive, 64 yards on the, in, on the ground. Update, Ottawa trailing in the second, 17-0 to Mohamed Seymour. Another number one seed yeah. out there in uh, 6A, I believe, right? There's that 6A or 5A? Uh, 5A. 5A. 5A, Ottawa's in yep, 5A, 5A as well. A. Ottawa has been in 6A in the past. Right. Twenty-one nothing, Morris over LP. Four fifty-four to go in this first half. Let's see if the Cavaliers can put a drive together. It'd be nice to get some points going into the half. There's really been just one big drive of the night for Morris, and that was it right there. Yep. Very impressive drive. They're trying to keep the ball away from yeah, Lynch, Lynch. I can tell. They're short kick there. I think it bounced to Lynch at about the 15. Mason turns it upfield, and he'll be taken down about the 24-yard line. So the Cavaliers will start this drive at their own 24-yard line. Yeah, like you said, if they can get uh, something going here and possibly score before the half, like you said, they get the ball starting in the third quarter. The Cavaliers have been in the majority of games of the half. Uh, they were trailing Morris 21 to seven in, in that game. It could have easily been 21 to 14. Of course, what Sycamore and Caneland were seven nothing at the half. Yep. Both games. Lynch under center for LP, and he's going to hand it off to Madrigal off right tackle Malik. Gets it up to about the 27-yard line, three yards on the carry. So the Cavaliers looking at a second down and seven coming up. Down to four and a half minutes to go in the half. Cavaliers have used two of their timeouts. Morris has not used the timeout. Well, the def Cavaliers definitely had to use one uh, yeah. as their defense was getting uh, pushed around there on that last drive, so... Second down and eight coming up after the two-yard run by Madrigal. Starkey and Simmons split out wide left. Boudreau wide right. Lynch will go back in the shotgun with Madrigal to his right. And a straight drop back by Lynch. Mason looking. He's going to mm. tuck and run. And no cannot open, get by Redinger. Oh, no, late flag. See if it's a, uh, a hold on LP. I mean, there really weren't any Morris players where that no. flag was thrown. I mean, all they were going towards Lynch, so. Interesting. And it is a hold on LP. Huh. That was a late call there. So spot of the foul. Lynch would have been close, probably a yard too short of the first down marker, but now they're moving back inside the 20. I don't even say the number of wow, the person who holds in high school. That, yeah. They mark it right at the 15 now for the Cavaliers, and it's a uh, first down marker at about the 34. So second down and 18, almost 19 for the Cavs. Try to get a big chunk of it back here and have third down somewhat manageable, eight, nine yards. 
Under four minutes, the clock is running. As we head to our St. Margaret's Health halftime show. 21-0 Morris. They scored in the first play of the game, a 95-yard kick return. Lynch is going to pass, and Mason rolling left, still going, and he's going to run. It's out to the 25, puts his head down, gets it out past the 30. I don't see any flags this time. No, it looks good. So Lynch out to about the 31. He so got 16 yards on that play. That's going to be set up a third down and two for the Cavs. <clears throat> He's been their most effective player on the ground on the, the quarterback keepers. Yeah, there wasn't anyone open. And no. the, yeah, Lynch really didn't have much time to throw, and he was out rolling to the left, which is difficult for a right-handed quarterback. So he tucked it and ran and got 15, 16 yards in that play. So third and almost three, really, for LP, now that we look at it, at their own 31-yard line. Bunch formation now for the Cavaliers. And Lynch faked the handoff. He's going to throw over the middle. Has a man, Boudreaux! Oh. Just off his fingertips, Brennan Boudreaux got open over. Oh, there's a penalty flag on the play. We'll see if it's a roughing the passer or it's a hold. It's got to be one of those two. Yeah, roughing yep. the passer on Morris. Lynch was down on the turf. Yeah, we were watching the ball uh, yeah. off of Boudreaux's fingertips, so didn't get to see what kind of uh, hit on the quarterback there was, but. So that'll be a 15-yard mark off against Morris. Boy, Boudreaux got open down the field, and Brendan laid out for it and just couldn't bring it in. But the Cavaliers will get the first down because of a roughing the passer against Morris. And LP will now have first and 10 at their own 46-yard line. That's a big 15-yarder there, so we'll give the Cavs uh, another set of downs. So three minutes and 22 seconds left. 3.22 to go in the half. Cavaliers trying to get on the board here before the intermission. Burrell now as a receiver. Lynch as well, and we see Boudreaux back under center. Hmm, well, hopefully it's not because of that hit. Yeah. And Burrell's going to get the handoff, and oh. Caleb's not going to go much of anywhere. Spun well, he ahead, spun actually. Spun ahead. <laughs> Defensive player gave him a little yeah. boost there, so he got back to the line of scrimmage. LP had a lot of misdirection on that one, and uh, really no gain. They're going to mark him pretty much back at the line of scrimmage, even though he got thrown forward a few yards. Well, that play just took a long time to develop, yeah. and Morris' defense was uh, all over by the time uh, Burrell actually got the ball. Yeah, they got a lot of speed uh, for Morris, so you got to really make your move immediately. Yep. Second and ten, no gain on the carry by Burrell. Burrell will be a wideout next to Starkey. Lynch in the shotgun, and uh, Mason going to roll out. Oh, he's, oh I can't believe tackle, he got away. And turns it inside, 50-45. He's got some running room. Still going down inside the 30, tripped up at about the 25-yard line. No flags on the play. Mason Lynch down to the Morris, 26. 29-yard run on that play by Mason. So Lynch with a huge run uh, for LP, almost broke that one, and they'll mark it at the Morris 26-yard line, first down and 10 Cavs. 2.20 to go. Again, LP only has one timeout. Boy, it does not take much uh, for Lynch to get free no. and not uh, a little hole here on the left, on the far or close sideline, and he was gone. In motion is Romanoli, Lynch handoff to Ellermeyer, and Peyton gets it down to about the 23-yard line. Give him two, maybe three on the carry. So the Cavs are going to have to play a little uh, quicker here. One minute and 49 seconds left with the clock moving. Second down and seven for the Cavs. They huddle up. Second down and seven. Clock is running. Be about a minute and a half to go when this ball is snapped to Mason Lynch. Bunch formation for the Cavs. Yeah, you'd think they'd uh, want to keep that timeout just in case they have yeah. to uh, attempt a field goal. Romanoli in motion, handoff off left side to uh, Ellermeyer. Peyton gets it down to maybe the 22-yard line. Not much. Maybe one or two yards on that carry. Yeah, they mark it at the 21. Five. 
A minute to go. Cavalier fans getting a little impatient here. <laughs> Third and five for the Cavs. Under one minute to play in the first half. Lynch is in the shotgun. Starkey and Boudreaux the whiteouts. Lynch looking to pass, throwing towards the sideline. Oh, it was I dropped. Think he dropped. It was dropped. He had uh, the receiver Simmons, but uh, Braxton just couldn't haul it in. Incomplete. Threw it right in the breadbasket of Simmons. So let's see if uh, I think they're going to try to get points. Yep, it looks like uh, Seth, Adams. Seth Adams is coming out on the field. Yep. He was kicking earlier uh, before the game started, 40 to 45 yard field goals relatively easily. So hopefully uh, they get a good snap, good hold, and a good kick up by Seth. And this will be a 38 yard field goal attempt from the left hash mark for Seth Adams. He's made one from 40 plus already this year at Howard Fellows. So a 38 yard field goal coming up. Snap is down the hole, the kick is up, and it looks, looks good. Pretty good from here. It is, the Cavaliers are on the board. 38 yard field goal for Seth Adams. That field goal brought to you by Financial Plus Credit Union. They belong to you and that's the plus at Financial Plus Credit Union in Peru, Ottawa, Mendota, Morris, and Diamond. So the Cavaliers are on the board, 45 seconds to go in the half. A 38-yard field goal by Seth Adams, and that uh, was plenty good. Yes, and unfortunately, we have 45 seconds left, and Morris has three <laughs> timeouts, so that's yeah. not um, – well, they're not going to sit that. on the ball here, I think. They're going to be uh, going full steam to try to get a score here. And here we go, another big play with the kick return coverage. Yeah, we cannot allow them to uh, get on to the side of the 50-yard line. We got uh, Jose Medina, the head coach, actually talking to – the uh, kick return coverage right now. This has been a big part of this ball game. Put LP in a hole right from the start. Yeah, you think you might want to just try to kick a little uh, chip a squib shot up. or a squib. Squib yeah. or something to the second row. Uh, avoid number 23 from even touching this thing. Zwiers is back along with Matt Stark. I take my chances with Stark. Nothing against him, but uh, 23 has already done enough damage tonight. Two touchdowns for Zwiers. Yep. Twenty-one to three, Morris over LP. The Cavaliers with a nice drive there, aided by a, a roughing the passer call against Morris. <clears throat> Cavaliers get on the board here with forty-five seconds to go. So he's got to keep it inbounds, but short of the uh, end zone. It just booted all the way through the end zone well, here. And there is the kick. It's going. Oh, yes. yeah, oh, yeah, very good. That'll be a touchback. Yep. Nice kick by Seth Adams. He kicked it towards Weirs, too. Yes, he did, but, but the uh, uh, corner of the end zone <laughs> was uh, fortunately our friend. So nice job by Seth Adams, and uh, Morris will start at their own 20. But as Mike mentioned, they have three timeouts, so uh, Morris – Definitely sees an opportunity here at more points before the break. Yep. Coming up towards the break, Ottawa down 24-0 to Muhammad Seymour. And uh, caught wind that the, I guess the Piatone head coach got himself ejected right before halftime. Oh, wow. Not sure what happened there. Not happy uh, with something. And there's a pass out into the flat, and uh, he goes out of bounds. That was... Matt Stark had a host of blockers for Morris, and that's a first down completion. Out to about the 31 yard line, give him 11 on that pass play. Just six seconds came off the clock. Now we got trips to the left, or trips to the right of Button, one receiver to the short side, four receivers for Morris. Button oh, passing towards the sidelines, Weirs catches it and goes out of bounds. Man, the separation he's able to get. And that'll mark it at about the 37. Six yard gain on that play. Clock stops with 34 seconds. Yeah, the defenders are giving them a little bit extra space yeah. there just to try to keep them in front of them. Second and four for Morris. And they hand it off. And there is Schwartz, and uh, oh, you he's gotta still wrap him going. Up. You got to wrap him yeah, up. Yeah, LP but was just, trying to hit him instead hit of tackle him. him. He is not going to go down with just hits. Nope. They have to wrap him up and bring him down to the ground. 
Schwartz gets it all the way down into LP territory at about the 42 yard line. And there's still 25 seconds and Morris uses the first time out. So 22 yard run on that yep. play for Schwartz. So uh, I saw, like I said, a couple Cavs defenders just trying to hit him and that's yeah. just not gonna work. Sacred Heart Griffin will have a running clock the entire second half, 41 nothing over Hall. Yeah, uh, according to Kevin Aronimus from the uh, BCR Piatones head coach, uh, tossed after receiving two straight unsportsmanlike penalties. Piatone was tagged for another unsportsmanlike on the last play, which would be assessed to start the second half. So mm. got ugly there, I guess. Well, I was going to say, you know, half. you get a little chippy with uh, being down that far yeah, that, that fast. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. driving all the way from Piatone, that's not a – <laughs> that's not next door to Princeton by no. any means. So, and if you're uh, Princeton, obviously you got to stay, uh, yes. stay cool because if you get a player ejected, you're going to have yep, to sit out. They're next out week. the next game, so yep. Princeton's going to have to keep their cool. Mm -hmm. So Morris has gotten the ball out already in LP territory at the 43 yard line. First and ten, Morris, 21 to three, they lead the Cavs. Button in the shotgun, straight drop back pass. Throwing over the middle, That's has a man over. over through Ashton Yard. He got open. Boudreaux, the closest defender for LP. That took just four seconds off the clock. 21 seconds to go in the half. Well, Yard's coming off the field, so that's a good thing. <laughs> Schwartz Weirs has is been, still on here. Yeah, though, and so. Schwartz has been a handful too. Yes, he has. Yeah, they don't lose much from Yard no. to Schwartz in the backfield. 21 seconds to go in the half. Morris has two timeouts left. Plenty of time. Button in the shotgun with Schwartz to his right. And they hand it off Schwartz. He uh, goes up the middle and is going to be brought down from behind, but not before he gets a first down. Brett Imany tracked him down inside the LP30. Morris has got size up front, and you'll see their backs just get behind one or two of those linemen. Yeah, he's yeah. getting really good blocks yeah. from his uh, guards and tackles in front of him. Timeout, their second timeout. We're down to 14 seconds now. 14 yards on that run. Ball spot at the Cavalier 29-yard line. LP, LP. You feel that LP's got to keep him off the board here to go in a halftime feeling pretty, you know, better yep. with getting the ball and being down 21 to three as opposed 28 to three. This would be a backbreaker. Adams came through with a touchback. So Morris has had to uh, drive all the way from their 20. Yeah, but like, uh, you know, they, they had all three timeouts and they played smart uh, football getting first downs quick. So, but of course it stops the clock in high school. And move the chains. So Morris with one timeout left now. So we come across the 8 o'clock hour, LP football on 1039 WLPO, 1220 AM, LaSalle, Peru, Oglesby. Good Friday evening, the last Friday of October. Hard to believe. <laughs> but uh, November just right around the corner. Yep, and they're going to be uh, falling back on the clock, so yeah. we're going to have early darkness uh, coming up here, I think, next week sometime. Empty backfield, four receivers to the left of Button, and an official blew the whistle. I don't see any flags, though. Morris emptying out the backfield. So I'm not sure what uh, the issue is here. The LP is going to have to send a player off. Not sure why. Oh, illegal substitution. Wow. So then move it down to the 24. So the Cavs must have had 12 on the field. Yeah. Oh, what a time to get that. So uh, Morris. Yeah, gets... especially coming out of a timeout. Yeah. So Morris will stay with the empty backfield. Four receivers to the left of Button. This is where you got to watch him taking off and running because he's got a lot of. Oh! Morris, false start. They had two or three guys jump. So they're going to give those five yards back. Wow, so, yep, that'll even things out. Move uh, Morris back to the 29. They had two of their uh, mm -hmm. 
Two guys on the left side jumped. So it's back to uh, the original line of scrimmage at the 29. Well, that helps the Cavs for sure. First and 10, Button standing at the 35-yard line. Low oh, snap. Foul. Oh, there's oh, another, another penalty flag. flag. And they throw it out to uh, Zwiers, and Imany brings him down. Yeah, Imany had his uh, <laughs> grip on that jersey. He was not going anywhere. Seven seconds went off the clock. So either, I mean, I guess the clock stops because there is a penalty. Yep, false start, it looks like, on okay, the offense. Okay, another so five yards. I was worried that it was a defensive player offside, yeah. but. So that took seven seconds. So Morris really probably has one more shot at uh, throwing it towards the end zone here. Yeah, unless they want to try a field goal. I'm not, you know, their kicker yeah. was be a long field goal, 44 yards. Well, no, actually it'd be 51 from here, wouldn't it? And Morris going to yep. call a timeout to talk about this play here. Seven seconds to go. They uh, have a big play offense. Yeah, they have the athletes to take care of this for sure. Princeton up 56 to 22 over Piatone. Seven minutes to go on that one. Let's see some other scores from around the state. Again, Ottawa losing big to Muhammad Seymour. Last check, my alma mater was uh, down 14-13 to DeKalb, Moline. A 7A game there. And that was at Moline. Uh, yeah, it's correct? at yep. Moline tonight. Yeah, Moline, the uh, higher seed. Is it a lower seed or higher seed? How do you say it? I'd say a lower seed. Lower, seat. I guess, right? <laughs> I don't know. I think it's a lower seed. Okay. I mean, it's a lower number, obviously. Yes. But, you know, it's, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I think it's lower seed. Okay. Better seed. How about that? That would work, too. Yeah. Back to pass his button. This is going to be the last play of the half. Oh. Throws towards the sideline, and it is caught. Or no, no, it's no. not. Wow. Boy, I tell you, that was a question mark there. He, I thought he had it in yeah. his hands, but he, receiver came down hard, and he's still on the ground will out nap. there. No penalty flies nope. in the play, so the quarter will end. Yeah, and I, I thought it was caught at first. Yes. But Good it play wasn't. by the defense. Morris staying oh, out there like now, they think the half's not over. Yeah, there's uh, no flags on the play. So yeah, they're uh, one of the Morris players was talking to an LP player. They got to watch that. Oh, there's uh, some okay chatter. Yeah, we've been we've yeah. had penalties for that before. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have. So LP's defense uh, keeps Morris off the board to end the second quarter. We go to the half. Morris leads twenty-one to three over LP. We'll have some first. Half stats coming up next on St. Margaret's Health Halftime Show. Jeremy and Mike Porter back to break it down after this. You gotta call Grazier's. Your water is running. It just won't stop. What do you do? You gotta call Grazier's. For heating and cooling. What do you do? Give us a call. You gotta call Grazier's. We're the ones who can stop the drips and the drip drip drops winter summer spring and fall when you need us give us a call you gotta call grazers 8221111 come see your friends at first state bank there's a certain satisfaction you get when you know you have a friend to turn to you have a place to go Year after year, day after day When you need a helping hand, we're along the way Come see your friends at First State Bank Member FDIC Welcome to KC Marketing, your digital marketing agency. KC Marketing specializes in providing affordable online solutions for your business. From graphic design and social media marketing to custom website development. Put the power of KC Marketing to work for you. Search KC Marketing Agency now to get started.
Cavaliers trail Morris 21 to three. Here's the uh, scoring summary of that first half. First play of the game, a 95 yard kickoff return for a touchdown by A.J. Zwiers and Morris. The kick was good. Then with 156 to go in the first, Ashton Yard, a six yard touchdown run. The PAT was good. Morris leading 14 nothing after one. Morris adds another touchdown about a little more than halfway through the second quarter. A 17-yard pass play from Button to Zwiers. Kick was good. The Cavaliers get on the board at 45 seconds of the first half. A booming 38-yard field goal by Seth Adams, and it's 21-3 here at the half. No turnovers uh, for either team. Morris had a fumble early on, but uh, they were able to return it. Now I'm going to turn it over to my partner for tonight's first half stats brought to you by First Federal Savings Bank. You'll score a personal or business touchdown whenever you work with First Federal Savings Bank in Peru and Ottawa. And uh, Mike, I mean, we've seen some of these games where LP's offense has been non-existent yep. until third, fourth quarter, but that's been, not been the case tonight. No, they did. They've done pretty well, actually, in the running game. Uh, Lynch, of course, has been the Lynch, no pun intended, yeah. Lynch pin uh, in the rushing game. He's got just under 100 yards rushing. Uh, Malik Madrigal did not play in the first quarter, uh, came in, you know, maybe the last 20 seconds of the first quarter and played the second quarter at 18 yards. And Peyton Ellermeyer had chipped in with eight uh, yards rushing. Uh, Lynch was 0 for 6 in passing, so they haven't uh, re- uh, completed a pass yet. And the, and the team has only had three penalties. So overall, I think that's been a pretty good half for the Cavaliers considering what they've done the last couple of weeks, especially with the penalties. So... Cavaliers just going to have to keep running the ball and, uh, you know, try to get in the end zone. Yeah, the Cavaliers have played uh, disciplined football, haven't turned it over, and the penalties really haven't bitten them. Morris has had more penalties, actually, than LP has. But uh, the kicking game has been the difference. A big kick return touchdown, a big punt return that set up Morris's second score of the game. And uh, you really look at it, that's the difference. Morris leading LP 21-3. We'll take another break. You're listening to the St. Margaret's Health halftime show we come back we'll uh get another subway scoreboard update and uh, take a look at uh, some lp activities going on this weekend at the half from morris high school it is morris over lp 21 to 3 back with more halftime coverage after this Gergovich Family Chiropractic in LaSalle is a proud supporter of high school sports. Dr. Gergovich utilizes the most advanced technology to provide effective care for men, women, and children of all ages. Whether you're getting down in a three-point stance, getting down off a ladder, or getting down on a dance floor, you need a chiropractor on your health care team. Search Gergovich Family Chiropractic today to see all the ways having Dr. Gergovich on your team can help you be happier, healthier, and pain-free.
by St. Margaret's Health. Whether it's a break, cut, or bruise, St. Margaret's Health has you covered. Learn more at aboutsmh.org. 21-3, it is Morris over LP here at the half. And, uh, Mike, I know a lot of fall sports are coming to an end, if not already ended, but uh, there is some action uh, for LP tomorrow. Yeah, it's been uh, slowly ending here. Obviously, you know, uh, soccer and volleyball just ended the other night, uh, possibly last night uh, in Rock, in Geneseo. They lost yeah, to Rock Island. Yeah. So, uh, yes, we do have a couple runners for the LP cross country team participating in the sectional for uh, 2A in Metamora. Eric Garcia and Anna Anya De La Cruz are running tomorrow, one for the boys team, one for the girls team. So they're going to be running for a chance to go to Detweiler Park next, uh, the following week. Uh, so they just have to, as an individual runner, because I don't believe the teams are running, they're going to have to finish the top 20 uh, runners who are not on a team that qualifies. So you know, I'm sure they're going to have the work cut out for them. The Metamora course is, uh, I remember from when our, we ran it back in the 17, very woody and um, a lot of hills. So hopefully they... Uh, <laughs> Weather, it looks to be a nice day for running uh, tomorrow, so hopefully they do well, and good luck to them, and hopefully they can make it to state. Yeah, sometimes I find myself, you know, because I do sports for LPO, sometimes I find myself saying it'd be a nice day for a run, but then I stop myself and saying, what do I know about that? Because I've never been a cross-country runner, never will be, but my assumption is it'd probably be a pretty good cross-country runner uh, tomorrow at the 50s, low 60s, I would think. Yeah, be... nothing really hot. Yeah. Um, I know, um, like I said, when we were there as a team in 2017, uh, it was a very warm day yeah. at Metamora, and uh, the boys and girls really struggled in the heat. They weren't used to that, obviously, that late in the season. Yeah. So, um, And, you know, these kind of weekends, it could be – you know, warm, it could be cool, it could be snowy, it could be rainy. I mean, <laughs> all sorts of weather here in October. So, um, but fortunately, tomorrow looks good, and uh, Cavalier runners are going to be uh, um, the Harriers, as they call yeah, the runners yep. there. So, uh, hopefully, they, I really uh, wish they do well. So, best of luck to them, and uh, I promised you some more scores. Uh, Princeton is a final. They beat Piatone. Let's see if I can get that score up real quick 56. To 28, Princeton over Piatone. At half, Muhammad Seymour 32 to nothing over Ottawa. So Muhammad Seymour threatening to uh, get a clock runner. Uh, Sacred Heart Griffin running the clock in the second half. Last check, they were up over Hall by a score of uh, 48 to nothing. So those were some. Of I got a Seneca update here. Seneca 9 and 0 on the season. Seneca leading Winnebago at the half, 21 to seven. So uh, the Irish looking to go 10 and 0, uh, and kind of quietly move on. Uh, they are 9 and 0, but you don't really hear them brought up. No. As far as some uh, of the the you know teams that could go a long ways in the playoffs. Obviously, Seneca is goes back as being a basketball. School. I was going to say historically, they're yeah. not necessarily a football team, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Um, a lot of success been, basketball. Sure, absolutely. It's always been you know coming out this way, uh, you know, away from LP. It's been the Morris. Yep. Um, of course, Metamora, those kind of teams with the history uh, in football. So we'll see how the Irish do. Of course, tomorrow we'll have St. Bede at home against Foreston. The Cardinals against the Bruins, 145 pregame. Yours truly will be joined by Mr. St. Bede himself, Mike <laughs> Brown Brownie, uh, uh, for St. Bede playoff football tomorrow. The Bruins at 7-2 and two and Foreston at 5-4. and four. You're listening to the St. Margaret's Health Halftime Show. We'll take a break. We come back. We'll pick Mike's brain and come up with our Gergovich Family Chiropractic second half adjustment. LP has work to do. They trail Morris 21 to 3 at the half. Be right back.
and uh, my quarterback here at Morris High School. We're about ready for the start of the second half. 21 to three Morris. Uh, before we start the second half, let's bring you the Gergovich Family Chiropractic second half adjustment. Everyone needs a chiropractor on their healthcare team. Go to gergovich.com to see all the ways having a chiropractor on your team can help you on your way to a healthy lifestyle. Let's uh, let's get the uh, key to the game after the kickoff here, Mike. Okay, yep. As we're about set for second half action. Again, Morris won the coin toss and uh, chose to receive, and they turned that into a quick seven. Pretty good decision there. So LP will get the ball to start the uh, second half. Lynch lets it bounce, and it's going to be a touchback. He was hoping it would uh, go out of bounds. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think he was looking for. It did not, so LP will start it at their 20. Uh, Mike, what do you think? Uh, second half adjustment here for the Cavs. Yeah, I think the Cavs are just going to have to, I can't say open it up a little bit more on offense, but they're going to have to probably take some more chances uh, you know, they are not going to be able to stall and try to kick field goals being down 18 points against Morris. And so I think they're just going to have to, uh, you know, run the ball like they have so far. And, uh, you know, fourth down, they may have to go for it if they, you know, even if they're on this side of the field, just they need to score. They need to score. So, so yeah, LP has got to put, uh, I mean, lay it all on the, all on the line here, 21-3 yep. to three as they uh, trail Morris. We see Mason Lynch. Carry the ball right out of the start of the half, and uh, he spins ahead past the 25-yard line, pushed out of bounds at the Morris sideline. Give Mason, look like, about seven yards on that carry. Yeah, I thought I saw a flag, but I don't think I see yeah. one now, so good run by Mason to start the third quarter. Yeah, he was kind of uh, one of the Morris players had a hold of his jersey and tugged him out of bounds mm. at the 27, so seven yards for Mason Lynch on that first down carry. Second and three for the Cavaliers. Trailing 21 to three. Lynch in the shotgun, Mason gonna pass. Oh, he, he was about to throw the ball. Uh, he's but in trouble. Get rid of the ball, Mason. Oh, gonna be nope. a big sack all the way inside the 20. Hmm. A loss of more than 10 yards on that play. Yep, Mason couldn't get away and could not throw the ball away. Yep, so minus 10 on that, wow. so third and 13 now for the Cavs. Ball spotted back at the LP, 17-yard line. Yeah, the offensive line is just unfortunately not getting uh, Mason any time to uh, even set up to try to throw the ball. So it is third and long for the Cavaliers here. Third and about 14. Lynch will be in the shotgun. The ball spotted at the LP 17-yard line. Straight drop back for Lynch, throwing over the middle to Boudreau and incomplete. He was uh, Brennan was kind of falling as uh, the pass yeah. came in. And uh, quickly, LP is going to go three and out to start the second yeah, half. Yeah, Boudreaux had the inside on that, but like you said, he was kind of tiptoeing and uh, stumbled and was un unable to uh, hold on to that pass. Well, now what you wanted if you're LP, a quick three and out, and Seth Adams will come out to punt inside his own five-yard line. Yeah, I think he's got to kick it over here towards the sideline and uh, possibly go out of bounds here. Zweer's... Right at the, uh, just about inside yeah. the uh, midfield. Zweers and Knapp back for Morris. Oh, Adams gets the punt away. It's going to take a bounce and uh, no yeah, a nice bounce. Going to let LP down it. And Zweers with a, kind of a cheap shot. Uh, LP crowd did not like that. Uh, they didn't throw a flag. No, I mean, there's really nothing illegal about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, the, you can hear one mom from LP not happy at all. Yeah, but uh, so very good punt lost and all that. Adams with a big time punt uh, down to the Morris 38 yard line. So uh, Morris will have pretty good field position at their own 38. They lead 21 to three over LP. And Button will start in the shotgun with two backs. Yard and Schwartz, and they're going to go Schwartz off left tackle. Turns it, or actually Yard, and he gets it out past the 50. Belsky hit him pretty hard, but not until uh, Yard had a first down out to about the 48-yard line. So just like that, again, a 14, almost 15 for Ashton Yard. They make it look pretty easy. Yeah, you don't want Belsky making tackles uh, 
10 yards Ten, away yeah. from the line yeah. of scrimmage. There's Button to hand off yard again, and he's going to be brought down by Rodriguez at about the 47 of LP. Antonio brought him down up the middle. Yeah, you'd rather have your linebackers making yep. a tackle four or five yards, 10 yards down the field than <laughs> Belsky. Here comes Morris again. Uh, no let up for this Morris offense. No huddle. Two receivers to the right, two in the backfield with Button. And I think one of the yep. Morris backs. Yeah, I think Yard a was quick leaning start. forward once again. Yep. So let him move Morris back five yards. Oh, oh it's offside on LP, okay. Oh, well, here we are talking about the Yard yep. moving early, but LP was apparently uh, offside. So it'll be second down and one now for Morris. They move the ball to the LP 42 yard line. Two receivers for Morris, one to each side of Button. And he hands it off to Schwartz oh, who is hit hard. Big hit in the backfield. That was Belsky. Belsky taking down Schwartz for a tackle for a loss. Wow, that's a first for today's game, so yep. nice play by Nick Belsky. So Belsky getting more action than usual on a defensive line. He's a senior. He's going to want to give it his all out there. So a third down and two. Let's see if LP can stop Morris. They go to a, a wishbone attack, and they give it to Yard. He's got a first down inside the 40. Off right tackle. Just power football yep. right there for Morris. They use the wishbone. Uh, not too many teams bring out the three running backs anymore. No, but they have uh, three probably pretty good ones here. Yep. So, First down, Morris. They get the uh, chains moving. Ball spotted at the Cavalier 40. First and 10, Morris. It's 21-3, to three, Morris. Three minutes in this third quarter. Late substitution out there on the yeah, field. Boudreau came out late for the Cavaliers. Button will pass. He's got Zwiers at the 42, 35. Medina tracks him down. Yeah, he got a little tripped up by Lynch, and then Medina finished him off out there on the far side of the field. About the 32-yard line, gain of eight. Yep. On the pass from Button to Zwiers. Yeah, the quarterback just takes one step and just gets it out there, so no time at all for the defensive line to get to the quarterback. And... I'll do this play. I'll make my point here. Oh, uh, fumble, snap, fumble, fumble. Uh, button running with it, and uh, he ends up getting decent yeah, I was yards. Say he's going to get the first down. You mentioned, Mike, uh, LP really hasn't had time to get any kind of pressure, and one name that we have not mentioned at all tonight on defense is Connor Lord. He has been a huge disruptor on defense for the Cavs, and El yep. Morris has really taken Connor out of the game. Yeah, Connor has done a really good job at the defensive end position all year, and um, – you know, they must have seen some film and uh, really are keying on him. First and 10 as a broken play. Give credit to their quarterback, Button. Picked it up off the turf and got a first down to the LP 33-yard line. Here's Ashton Yard off right tackle, and he's down inside the 20. He's got another Morris um, run, nine. and that's uh, going to be short of a first down, actually, gain of nine. That's yeah, at nine yards. Morris back in the Illinois Valley Credit Union red zone. And they hand it off to Yard again. He's got oh. running room up the middle. Touchdown. touchdown it's about 19 yards we'll go with on that carry. Pretty yeah. much untouched. Yeah, I was going to say he ran right at the middle without being touched by an LP defender. And uh, once he got that head of steam going, he was not going to stop. 7-18 to go in the third. Uh, that's a big touchdown there. LP had the ball, but went quickly three and out to start the second half, and Morris punches it in at uh, 718 of the third. And here is the PAT attempt coming up. And LP was off sides. Yep. So the whistle's blew. The kick would have been good. Let's see if Half Morris... the distance to the goal, but we'll see. Morris is the kind of confident team I could see him saying, you're going to do that? We'll go for two then. <laughs> but so far, no indication that they're going to not do an extra nope. point. Hmm. 
decline the penalty. So they'll move it up. And the kick is up, and it is good. So Morris gets a delayed extra point there, and they extend their lead now 28-3 to over LP. We'll take a timeout, be back. LP getting the football down 28-3 to after this on 103.9 WLPO. Twenty-eight to three, Morris over LP. The Cavaliers take the kickoff at the ten. It's Caleb Burrell, and uh, Caleb leaps Ooh, over. Upended there. <laughs> yep, gets it out to about the twenty-eight yard line. So the Cavaliers will have first and ten at their own twenty-eight. Down twenty-eight to three. Good return by Burrell. Yeah, not a bad, you know, they're trying to intentionally keep it away from Mason Lynch. Sacred Art Griffin, 55 nothing over Hall in the second half. Hmm. Well, they're a potential state title yeah. contender yep. for sure. Regardless of that, what a great season for Hall. They were 1-8 yep. and eight last year. And they got themselves where they needed to win their last two games. They did, so... What a good, congratulations on a great season, uh, Randy Teeman and uh, the rest of yep, the Red Devils. Yep. You have to come back from one and eight is yep. not an easy thing to do. And to be up in 4A, they're not really a 4A school. Uh, obviously, Putnam County's enrollment uh, added to a Hall made them a 4A school. Yep. Uh, that was a carry by Lynch. Mason gets it out to about the 32, gain of three. Second down coming up for the Cavaliers. Lynch will go back in the shotgun. Cavaliers spread things out here. Four receivers. Mm. Ellermeyer, the lone back in the backfield. This is the first formation like this for the game. Get rid Lynch of it. Lynch oh. is uh, rolling left, throwing over the middle, and oh, it's no, tipped no. up and intercepted. Nice uh, play by the defender there. He tipped it to himself. Yeah, Brett Evanson. The intended receiver looked to be uh, Gage Starkey. Hmm. So the first turnover of the night for other squad. LP Lynch throws the interception. Yeah, he got away from the uh, rusher, and he uh, had a little space over there, but he tried to get it to Starkey, and it just kind of bounced off of Starkey's hands into the air, and Evanson uh, caught it. So good play by the defense. Tonight's turnover is uh, sponsored by Bex. Keep your car turning over with fuel from Bex and Prue or LaSalle. Try delicious Godfather's Pizza from Bex in LaSalle. So Morris threatening uh, to do what they did earlier this season and uh, pull this one, you know, kind of pull away in the yep. second half. Make this look like a laugher. It's 28-3, and Morris has it first and 10 at the Cavalier 39-yard line. In motion is Weirs, and he's going to get the handoff. He's going to pass. Has a guy wide open, caught at the 15. Going to be tackled inside the 10. So Morris brings out a little trickery. Caleb Burrell with the tackle, but a big gain. Look like number 22, yeah, Will Knapp. Will Knapp with the reception. So Zwiers 
for the kick return. He's ran the ball, caught the ball, and now he's thrown the ball. And he'll be back next year, Cavalier fans. <laughs> First and goal as Morris back in the Illinois Valley Credit Union red zone. First and goal at the LP8. Button with the uh, handoff to Schwartz and oh, uh, breaks two tackle tackles there, yep. and he's in for the touchdown. So Morris, just like that, gets another score, an eight-yard touchdown run for Schwartz. Mm. And they're pouring it on now. Yeah, that's what it. Uh, that's what they do. They uh, just get some momentum and they don't stop. Again, uh, last week, Caneland busted through with 21 third-quarter points against LP. And uh, Morris with 14, just a little over halfway through the quarter. This kick will make it a 35-3 game. High Ooh, snap. High. Yep, gets it down, though, and it's good. We'll keep it here. Again, the winner of this one uh, will play either Centralia or Troy because you're thinking, well, those two teams are pretty far south. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Morris and LP technically in the uh, southern part of the 5A bracket. So, yeah, a lot of 5A teams up north. Yeah, so Morris, obviously more if you're Morris and looks like you're going to win this game, you would hope that uh, Troy wins over Centralia because Troy is the higher seed, and that would mean Troy, which... I believe it's around the St. Louis area would be making the trip up to Morris uh, next week. Yeah, I'm sure Morris does not want to drive down to Centralia. No, uh, home of the orphans. For yeah. a uh, Saturday afternoon matinee <laughs> down a, there. That's another school that's well known for their basketball, Centralia. In fact, I think I had seen at one point Centralia was like the winningest basketball program, if not, El if not Illinois, maybe all the country. Oh, wow. Yeah, they got some quite a bit of history, the uh, Centralia Orphans on uh, along old Route 51. Hmm. Went through there a few times as I went to Southern Illinois and always was looking for different ways to sure. come back home. Right. It was, no matter which way I went, it was five-plus hours. Yep, so. I'm sure. <laughs> so here we go, 35-3, to three, Morris. Leading big over LP, and uh, this time oh, it'll be Burrell again at the 10, the 15, the 20. Caleb's at the 25, and uh, down at about the 26. So LP down big, 35 to 3. Morris with two touchdowns here in the third quarter to uh, build up this big margin. Cavaliers first and 10 at their own 27-yard line. I'll keep an eye out for some other scores. Yeah, the Cavs are just going to have to uh, play their game, you know, run the ball and uh, just try to drive it down the field. They're not. It's going to be very difficult for them to uh, make up any ground on this right now. Lynch still at quarterback for LP, and he's going to fake the pitch and look to pass. And Mason is going to run, and he gets it out to about the 30, 31 yard line. And a three, maybe four for Mason. Romanoli will come in. I haven't really called Brady's name no. all that much. He had a couple runs early in yeah, the game. Yeah, it was very early in the game. Yeah. Yeah, give Lynch four yards on that carry. Fifty-five six. So Hall did get a touchdown against Sacred Heart Griffin. That could be so one I of those. Were, was that a Rochetta Rochetta <laughs> touchdown? Yeah, it makes you think it probably was. Lynch over the middle has oh, Boudreaux. Boudreaux is wide open at the fifty, and he's got it all the way inside the Morris forty. So that was a pass play that they had earlier in the evening, but they just couldn't connect. That time they did. Lynch found Boudreaux streaking down the middle of the field. And let's move the chains. The Cavaliers first and 10 at the Morris 38-yard line. Yeah, first completion for 23 yards from Lynch to Boudreaux. Saw them, uh, Brennan, make a huge catch last week against Caneland. Yeah, the offensive line finally gave him enough time to uh, 
square up and actually get it down the field, and Boudreau made a nice catch. First and 10 LP, down about 4.15 to go here in the third. And off nope. up the middle, not a lot there. Looked like maybe Ellermeyer. Yeah, Morris was coming in on a blitz and ran right into Ellermeyer, but yep. he was able to get a couple yards. Peyton Ellermeyer gets a long one, one, a short two. Yeah, give him one. They mark it at the 37 of Morris. 35 to 3, Morris. LP has seen this happen to them quite a bit against the better teams. Uh, they're just getting blitzed to start yep. the third quarter. Lynch under center for LP. Ellemeyer again in the backfield. In motion is Roman Ole. And LP is going to have to call a timeout. Yep, yep. just uh, zero on the play clock. Oh, ah, okay. I want to invite you to a, a big event tomorrow at uh, Illinois Valley Community College. It is the third annual Halloween on the Hill, a trunk or treat. And uh, be one until three o'clock. You can't miss it. Uh, the first two years, there's been quite a line of cars down Orlando, Smith, and Oglesby. So you want to get there early. Don't even have to get out of your car just to bring all the kids, bring buckets to have the candy. There's candy stops along the way. And a lot of fun, third annual Halloween on the Hill. Dr. Ed Monroe teaming up with Star Rock Media, 96.5 The Wolf, third edition of a Halloween on the Hill. I know the whole concept of trunk or treats kind of gained a lot of steam in it, recent years. Yeah, it had, obviously, with the pandemic, yeah. of course, and Halloween being canceled and, you know, kids not get, being able to go trick-or-treating in 2020. A lot of uh, groups and organizations went to this kind of event, and it, like you said, it's really taken off. Yeah. I mean, there's been – trunk or treats all over uh, Illinois Valley and Illinois. Um, they're very popular, so the kids love it. Obviously, they get a the little extra candy uh, <laughs> in a prelude to yeah. uh, Monday night's Bonanza. And, uh, again, you can go to starbrock.media and click the link to uh, Halloween Happenings if you want to map out your Halloween weekend. Uh, we have a list of all the trick-or-treat times, uh, trying to hit in as many towns as you can. Yeah, and I think, you know, the weather's going to be very good yes. for trick-or-treating on Monday, yep. so... Uh, no uh, costumes underneath a winter coat or anything like that. Uh -oh. Lynch throwing deep to oh! Boudreau and uh, tight coverage out yep. there. Brennan had it knocked away by Knapp. So a uh, nice play by Knapp to knock it away from Boudreau. It'll be a third and nine for LP. As the ball again spotted at the 37 yard line of Morris. 35 to three, Morris over LP. Definite four down territory yeah, here, of yep. course. So they don't all have to get it all here on uh, third down. 324 to go in the ball game. Last check, Mohamed Seymour up 40 to nothing in the third quarter over Ottawa. Cavaliers, boy, they got five seconds. I don't think they're going to get this one off. No. And they're going to call another timeout. Mm. Yeah, that's kind of tough here in the third quarter to be using all time, two of their timeouts on just uh, offense just not getting ready. To be 39 Cavaliers, 324 to go in the third. LP with the ball at the 37 of Morris. Again, Princeton already victorious tonight. Hall going down in a big way. Ottawa trailing. Again, let's check on Seneca. They were up at half over Winnebago. That game seemed to be pretty close. And uh, we'll have, again, St. Bede here tomorrow on 1039 WLPO at 2 o'clock kickoff. Yeah, it definitely seemed like a lot of the local teams had some tough uh, tough, tough, draws, tough yeah. draws for sure. <laughs> Let's see about Seneca. Marquette plays tomorrow at home against Morrison. So wish the best of luck to coach uh, Tom Yups and the Crusaders. After three, Seneca 28-7 over Winnebago. Okay, so they've separated a little bit. Seneca Irish look to uh, yeah. move on. They're in Class 3A. St. Bede and Marquette in 1A. LP Ottawa in 5A. Hall in 4A. Princeton's in 3A. Well, maybe Princeton and Seneca can meet up somewhere along the way in 3A. If they keep winning. That would be a, a good local crowd yeah. for sure. 39. Oh. Lynch is in trouble. Going to be sacked by Redinger. Back at the 48-yard line. A loss of about 11. Yeah. Sam Redinger, who is uh, verbal to Northern Iowa... Showed his speed there from the linebacker spot and sacked Mason Lynch. 
Well, all the way back to the 47, so 10-yard loss on that play. And you can see Rediger, as uh, the ball was being snapped, he was running right through the center uh, with uh, no offensive lineman touching him, and he had Lynch had no shot. So let's see if LP goes ahead and goes for it or punts it here. I don't think I, I don't see, see Adams, Adams yep. out there. So Cavaliers will go for it. Fourth and 19. And LP at their own, or at the Morris 47-yard line. Lynch going to throw, and the ball is batted down at the line of scrimmage. Nope. So LP with a turnover on downs. Looks like Redinger, or actually that would have been number six, Gage Phillips for Morris was there. So 35-3, to Morris with the comfortable lead over LP. And uh, Morris will take over at their own 40-70-yard line. 2.35 to go in the third. Cavaliers looking like they're going to finish at 5-5 five and five for uh, the third straight season. And for the second straight season, have their season come to an end at the hand of Morris. Yep. Morris comes out, trips to the right, four receivers. Now they're going to empty up the oh. backfield. Five wide receivers total. They throw it to Schwartz. Oh! oh nice play yep. Caleb by Caleb Burrell. He, Schwartz was hit immediately. He got through the three blockers on that side of the field and made a great play. Yeah, when you throw that wide pass, it takes a while to yep. get there, to the, and that does leave your receiver kind of out to dry. And uh, Burrell giving up some weight to uh, Schwartz, but he still laid a nice lick on him. And that'll be a tackle for a loss for Caleb. A loss of three for Morris. Second down and 13 now. Yeah, Caleb Burrell's had a really good season on the yes. defensive side of the yep. ball. Usually always guarding the other team's best receiver. Yep. And uh, they go Schwartz, who is obviously ticked off at the last play. Oh, we're going to watch some uh, extracurriculars yeah. out here. And uh, Schwartz gets it down to the 40. And they had a second and long, and they hand it off to Schwartz, and he gets the first down. Yeah, he uh, had a head of steam going, and he got it all the way into Cavs, ter Cavs territory. At the 40. 16-yard run on that play. First and 10, Morris, and uh, there is Schwartz again, and he's down to about the 35. So gain of five for Schwartz. As, uh, for each and every play, there's some players jawing now. Yeah, it's getting a little uh, testy out there yeah. for sure. Second down and five coming up for Morris. Morris it's definitely it. flexing their muscles out there. I said again, these teams have played each other now five times in less than two calendar years. There's Schwartz. He's uh, breaking free, gets some blocks down the field, one man to beat, and nice tackle by Kennedy to hit Schwartz at about the six-yard line, but a gain of about 28 as this has been a Schwartz drive mm -hmm. for uh, Morris. Jacob Schwartz, and he'll be back next year. He's only a junior. Yep. He's had uh, 49 yards in the last three plays. And Morris is in the Illinois Valley Credit Union red zone. First and goal at the Cavaliers' six-yard line. They give it to Yard, and uh, he is going to be tackled at about the five. Short gain on that play. Second and goal, yeah, gain only about one for yard, a yard for yard. <laughs> See if they're going to try to uh, snap this yeah. before the end of the third quarter. They don't they have to. They probably will. They, but, yeah. They, their offense hurries it up. They will. They get one more playoff here. Schwartz, touchdown. Yep, I don't think he was touched. Yep. Schwartz, the workhorse on that drive, five yards. Now That's you wonder his. if they're going to go for two here to put it with over 40 yard, uh, forty points oh, uh, that would to make get the it, yeah. uh, yep. running clock here. It looks like the kicker setting up there, so I guess not. They're not going to go for two. I'm actually kind of surprised about that. but Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I don't think – I don't think LP should take that as them trying to run out the score if they went for no, two. I think they should realize point, that. No. Why wouldn't you just try to get the running clock if you're that close? And uh, there is the extra point, and it's 42-3. to three. 
Yeah, good call, Mike, about the, uh, they could have made it 40 there. Right. That was with four seconds to go again. That drive did not take very long. No. 21 points. Caneland put up 21 in the third quarter last week, and Morris has done it tonight against LP. So, uh, and coming into this game, um, this had been the toughest quarter for LP. Yep. This third quarter, they they were outscored coming in tonight, 55 to 36 in the third quarter, and uh, add 21 more points to that, so 76-36. The Cavs have been uh, outscored in the third quarter this year. Yeah, that's tough, you know, coming out of halftime. You know, the games have generally been close uh, to give up that many points in the third quarter, you know, just kind of teams pulling away. And the offense uh, for the Cavs don't really have the uh, moment, you know, the, the momentum to be able to score a lot of points quickly. 42-3, Morris with the lead over LP. Romanoli's in the back uh, to receive with oh, yeah. uh, Burrell. So give Mason a little break. I mean, they haven't been kicking to Mason anyway. No. Yeah, Burrell's been busy on the kick returns for LP. It was uh, earlier in the season, it was, what, 49-7, to and this one's probably going to end up pretty close to that. And uh, Romanoli will take the kickoff. Brady's at the 25 and uh, going to be tackled down at about the 27. And that'll be the last play of the third quarter. So we'll come back. 12 minutes to go. LP losing big at Morris. Morris with 21 answered in that third quarter to pull away. It's 42-3 to Morris back with LP's last 12 minutes after this on 103.9 WLPO. Gergovich Family Chiropractic in LaSalle's a proud supporter of high school sports. Dr. Gergovich utilizes the most advanced technology to provide effective care for men, women, and children of all ages. Whether you're getting down in a three-point stance, getting down off a ladder, or getting down on a dance floor, you need a chiropractor on your health care team. Search Gergovich Family Chiropractic today to see all the ways having Dr. Gergovich on your team can help you be happier, healthier, and pain-free. When you need a new appliance, think Grazier's Plumbing and Heating in McNabb. Look at this impressive list of brands Grazier's offers. From kitchen to laundry, appliances at Grazier's may just be the best kept secret in McNabb. Lynch down. So Lynch got it out to the 31 yard line. Mason running hard. And again, after every play, there's a little chirping going on. That's another thing of your Morris. You don't want any of your kids getting ejected in this game and having to sit out next week. So you got to stay disciplined. Second down and six. Give Lynch four. He was pushed out of bounds, so that'll stop the clock. Morris one more score away from uh, getting the clock to run. Lynch going to go back in the shotgun. He's got three receivers. First time all season long LPs use this kind of an <laughs> offense. Hope he's Lynch going throwing deep, deep for Starkey, and it's uh, in oh, no, nope, nope. he just couldn't hold on to it. Great effort by the Morris defender, Brock Grogan. He almost had it, but then went to the turf and could not hang on to it. So it'll be third down and six coming up for LP. Someone called a timeout. Oh, yeah. Is Morris calling a timeout? Looks like Morris was a... Uh... Yeah, I guess. Well, I think uh, the uh, defender there was kind of chirping to the LP sideline, so I oh. wonder if the coach saw that and kind of just reminded the team to yeah. kind of uh, you know tone it down a little bit because, like you said, uh, uh, someone gets tossed, yep. they're out the next game. Yep. 
42 to three, Morris leading LP. The Cavaliers have a third and six at their own 31 yard line. Again, a big day tomorrow. We got St. Bede playoff football, two o'clock kickoff against Forreston. We'll take the pregame at 145. And uh, Halloween on the Hill at uh, IVCC starting at one o'clock. And we're back after the timeout. Morris did take a timeout. They yes, they did. Two left. LP's got one. And Lynch will pass again. Oh, and the ball is deflected. Nope. Incomplete. So uh, Lynch has had a few passes get deflected. And uh, that looked to be number six. Gage Phillips. Yeah, the defenders know that uh, if they can't get to the quarterback, they get their arms up and try to make it more difficult for the quarterback to throw the ball. And they've been pretty successful knocking down, I'd say, at least three balls, I would think. Let's see what LP does here again. Uh, Looks like they're going for it. <laughs> fourth and six. Yeah, they're, they're throwing the punt away here in the second half, I think. Obviously, this would give Morris great field position to get that. Um, score to get the clock running. Let's see if Cavaliers though, can get a first down. Fourth and six. And Boudreau now back to pass. Uh oh, he's just throwing the to lynch. Double, and... double teamed out there. Yep, it was all. Oh, oh, penalty flag on the play. Might be a pass interference on Morris. It was really just up for grabs. Lynch had two Morris defenders on him Dimitri uh, Lindenmuth and also Mason Holbert. Mason wasn't going to catch it, and uh, my guess is it's a pass interference on Morris. Yeah, I'd say it's yep. got to be. I mean, yep. So the Cavaliers will get uh, a first down off that penalty. Cavalier faithful down here are happy about that penalty <laughs> call for sure. What do they call that? The Bronx cheer, kind of the uh, sarcastic. They're quite happy about that. I think the game has been refereed very well. Actually, I really haven't seen anything. No, I know they were a little upset about that uh, little block of that, play, uh, yeah. on the punt, but I that yeah. really wasn't uh, no. nothing nothing illegal about it at nope. all. Haven't really mentioned the officials much, and that's a good thing usually in whatever sport it is. Lynch is going to pass. Oh, he's going to go double key, pass. And he's going to throw back to Lynch, and he's got uh, blockers. Mason with 50, 45, 40, and uh, oh, he's still the on his feet. Oh. oh, there's a penalty. Way on the other side of the field. I mean, <laughs> the all 22 players are on the one side. Yeah, and, there's a flag and he threw over it here. from right in front of the LP coaching staff. Wow, he wasn't even near the play and threw a flag. Well, we were just talking about the officials. Uh, So we got a fourth down coming up for LP. A couple of LP coaches having a discussion here in the press box. So let's sort this out. Yeah, I don't know. I was thinking maybe a sideline warning, but there's quite a discussion. So I'm thinking that there's going to some call. Yeah, if it's a sideline warning, that's one thing. Yeah, there was a weird flag. Yeah. Uh, the official that threw it was nowhere near the action. No. Nope. Up, oh, they're picking it up, so no okay, penalty flag on that. So it's a big that. game. Oh. So LP's going to have the ball spotted at the 34-yard uh, line yeah. of Morris. A little trickery. Starkey will have the pass completion to Mason Lynch. <laughs> yeah, and that was uh, quite a pass from Starkey, honestly, all the way across the field. And Lynch had uh, all sorts of blockers on that side. First and 10 LP at the Morris 34-yard line. So the Cavaliers... 
would love to try to get a touchdown here. It's 42 to three in this fourth quarter. They've been held to a field goal. Lynch under center. And Mason's gonna pass again and throws into oh. the crowd. He's got him. Looks to be a touchdown. There, it is. There. Great catch out there. Boudreau. Lynch to Brendan Boudreau. 34 yard touchdown. So that gives the Cavalier faithful something to cheer about there. They've hooked up over the middle a few times. Yes, they have, and he was he was open. That was a great pass uh, by Lynch, and Boudreaux laid out and dove and got into the end zone. So the Cavaliers, a 34-yard pass play, Boudreaux from Lynch, and it's 42-9 now. Seth Adams adding the extra point. A high snap, kick is up, and it is good. That's by good. the way... That LP touchdown brought to you by Tana Country Services. Doing whatever it takes 24-7. Plumbing, electric, heating, and cooling for over 100 years. Go to TanaCountryServices.com to find out more. A uh, big-time pass play. Mason Lynch, 34 yards to Boudreaux. And that extra point by Seth Adams brought to you by Financial Plus Credit Union. They belong to you, and that's the plus at Financial Plus Credit Union in Peru, Ottawa, Mendota, Morris, and Diamond with 10.58 to go. 42 to 10, Morris over LP. Yeah, that uh, was a great series right there. I mean, the Cavaliers were down to fourth and six, and they got that big play, uh, that trick play, and the next pass for a touchdown. So nice little series there for the Cavaliers. Yeah, Starkey, uh, who's been one of the top receivers as far as LP goes. Obviously, they don't have <laughs> right. uh, you know big receiving numbers by any means, but uh, he one threw One of the it. top targets for yes. sure. Threw it to Lynch, and uh, and then Mason was under some pressure and flung it down the field, and a great catch, and Boudreaux dove and got over the uh, goal line for the touchdown. So it's nice to see. You see even like you can see the LP body language after that touchdown. Yeah, I mean, much they've improved. obviously had their heads down, you yeah. know, most of the game here, of course, being down so much, but uh, a little positive energy here on the sideline and in the crowd. Yep, 42-10. to 10. 351 total yards uh, for Morris, 223. That brings LP up to 85. LP's actually got more passing yards than Morris now, Mike. Yep, two yards more. <laughs> 85 so. to 83, 17 to 10 on the uh, first downs. Time of possession is really, uh, actually, LP's had the ball longer than Morris has. Of course, one of Morris's possessions was a uh, kick return for a touchdown. So that Yeah, that makes a big difference. Seth Adams with a touchback. Nice job by Seth, adding to his season total of touchbacks. 42 to 10, Morris. They got within one point to uh, run the clock. And uh, LP gets it to a 42 to 10 game. 10.58 to go in this uh, ball game. Just past the nine o'clock hour, you're listening to LP Cavalier football. On 103.9 FM, AM 1220, WLPO, LaSalle, Peru, Oglesby. And uh, Morris really doesn't have that kind of offense that you just uh, ground and pound and run the clock out. So we'll see if they'll still go to the air. They have a, a three-receiver set with Button in the shotgun. And he will hand it off and runs into a crowd of LP defenders. Yeah, right at the line of scrimmage. Look like number 31. That's a fairly new ball carrier for Morris. Merwicki Griffin. was in there, and uh, Antonio Rodriguez. The Younger's Weirs, Griffin's Weirs. Someone's clapping for something. Oh, I don't know what. Did Hartman come out for a play? Maybe they got Tommy, Tommy out for a play, I guess. He's injured. I think that's what happened. Oh, right? yeah, Tommy yeah. Hartman was able to make that uh, one play, and, you know, of course he hurt his uh, – had a leg injury a couple weeks ago and a senior uh, graduating this year, of course. So it's good to see him get out there for one play. Second and 10, no gain on the carry for Morris. Seeing some backups for Morris out there right now. Yeah, they have a backup quarterback as well, and they're going to have to call a timeout. In at quarterback for them is uh, Jack Amiano. He's a senior. So smartly, I would think, Morris has uh, got their starters out of the game at this point. Yeah, there's really no sense to, uh, you know, potentially, uh, you know, get an injury by any nope. means. 
49 or 42 to 10 Morris with the lead. Ten oh nine to go. Each team has used two timeouts. We got some scores popping up on there. Looks like a Highland fifty to nothing over Dunlap. That's a five A mm. score. Oh. See that pop up there. Yeah, I'm just looking at the stats on the uh, scoreboard, and Morris really added to their rushing total in that Oof, third quarter. Yeah. 268 yards rushing uh, so far in this game. Schwartz, Schwartz and Yard, uh, those are the two yeah, main guys absolutely. on the ground. Second and 10 for Morris after the timeout. Ooh, a low like snap. Looks like a fumble or something. And uh, the quarterback would just go forward and uh, take him down. Quarterback got hit hard by number 53, Nolan Glenn. Yep. So Morris moving backwards now with their backups in there. Caden Berkowitz in there also. Third and 15, a loss of five on the play. Morris going to go ahead and try to squeeze out every second of the clock here. And yep. just run up the middle. That was Weirs again, the younger is Weirs. Yep. Griffin, Griffin he's a sophomore. Yep. So Morris will punt it back to LP, three and out. I believe that's the first three yeah, and out. I would think now, so. Yep. LP's, LP's made Morris punt tonight, but I think that's yep. the first three and out. Under nine minutes to go in this ball game. 42 to 10, Morris over LP. Big Carson or uh, Merwicki <laughs> running to get out the field. <laughs> and no uh, return. It doesn't nope, look like Lynch, Lynch is not going to go. Oh, <laughs> oh. Mason <laughs> fell on it at the 40. Well, I guess that's smart. You know, yeah. stop it from rolling. Yeah. You know, obviously, yeah. no danger of. Uh, him fumbling by any means, but still risky. <laughs> Smart, Cav but. Yep, Cavaliers potentially on their last offensive drive of the season. They'll take it first and 10 at their own 40. Looks like the, uh, yep, Morris has uh, made some substitutions yep. here on the defensive side, too. Let's see if the Cavaliers. I see Billy Minnie out there for the first time. He didn't play last week. Number nine yep, for LP. Yep, nine's back in. He's a senior. First and 10 LP at the 40. Lynch is going to pitch it to Ellermeyer, and uh, Peyton puts his head down and gets big, about three yards on the carry. Big Luke, hit Brown. By Luke Brown. Luke yep. Brown. Run through the seniors on this Cavalier team Caleb Burrell, Mason Lynch, Tommy Hartman, Gunnar Skoog. Ethan Pohar, Billy Minnie, Caden Berkowitz, Antonio Rodriguez, Peyton Ellermeyer, Malik Madrigal, Brett Imany, Jamar Smith, Braxton Simmons, Connor Lorden, Gage Starkey, Creed McCormick, Nicholas Belsky, and Warren Rowicki. So those are your seniors for the Cavaliers playing the, what appear to be their last high school football game. Yeah, I think uh, Nick Belsky was looking into uh, playing in college. I believe he might be one of the only ones that's looking at playing in college. Lynch over the middle to Boudreaux again. And a great catch by Brendan for LP. Moving the ball down to uh, the Morris 32-yard line. 25-yard pass wow. play. Yeah, and some of these LP players, too, that could very well play in, like, uh, the Shrine game, you know. Sure. Uh, an all-star game of sorts. So. Yep. So a big pass play, and LP eclipsing the 100-yard passing mark. My guess is that's the first I, I time say, this I season. don't think that's happened so far this year. <laughs> 107 passing yards. Lynch going to keep it, and uh, Mason still, on his feet. still running down about the 20. And that's going to be enough for an LP first down, a gain of about 12. 
Yeah, Lynch is going to be on his way to 150-yard rushing day. So the Cavaliers are in to the Illinois Valley Credit Union red zone. Illinois Valley Credit Union now offering Visa cards with interest rates as low as 9.9%. If you live, work, or worship in LaSalle Bureau of Putnam County, you can become an IVCU member. See more now at IVCU.com. First and 10 LP at the Morris 20. Lynch back under center. And he's going to run the option again. Mason going to keep it. And this time he runs into a Morris defender. Went forward for about three yards. Okay. Second down and seven for LP at the uh, Morris 16-yard line. More substitutions on Morris's yeah. side. Down to six minutes to go in this ball game. And Lynch is going to pitch it to, uh, looks like Kennedy, number 11, gets a carry. Yep, Caleb Kennedy with the mm -hmm. rush. Forward progress is going to be, he got pushed back quite a bit, but looks like he made it all the way to the 10-yard line. Caleb seven-yard run, it appears. And a pick six on defense earlier this season. Oh, Six-yard gain, so three yard, third and one. Yep, third and one at the Morris 11. State inbounds, the clock still running. Again, it uh, looks like Morris will play the winner of Centralia and Troy. I would guess that'd be a Saturday game either way with the travel working in with that one. And Lynch takes it and runs with it. He's got and a first down. He does have a first down, down about the five. It'll be first and goal for LP. Oh, they're telling them to run the clock. And they got to reset oh. the chains, and then they should, yep. There it goes. First and goal, Cavaliers at the five of Morris. Cavaliers looking for a second straight touchdown here in the fourth quarter. Morris with late Whoa. substitutions. <laughs> a lot of a lot of changes yep. over there on the defensive side. First and goal, LP at the five. Let's see if they can punch in another touchdown here. Lynch going to fake the pitch. Mason running left, and he is going to get in. Oh, oh, I don't Did know. He hold on to the ball. <laughs> They're going to say no. He but fumbled he stepped out, of bounds. out of bounds. Yeah, boy, he got that down four yards uh, rush, but. <laughs> It could have almost been a touchback if yeah. they would have said he fumbled it into the end zone, but they're going to say he stepped out of bounds at the one. I know he was trying to reach the ball yeah. across the end zone, but uh, lost it there. So second and goal at the one. For the Cavaliers. That Troy Centralia game is tomorrow afternoon. So my guess is Morris will send quite a few of their coaches down to that one. See if Lynch calls his own number at second and goal at the one. Mason will run with it. Oh, good. He spins, spins into the end zone. And gets in for the Cavalier touchdown. That LP touchdown brought to you by Town of Country Services. Doing whatever it takes 24-7. Plumbing, electric, heating, and cooling for over 100 years. Go to townofcountryservices.com to find out more. One-yard touchdown run by Mason Lynch. Brings LP a little closer here in the fourth mm -hmm. quarter. 4.14 to go. LP with uh, 163 yards on the ground, 107 through the air. Not far off from uh, Morris's offensive. No. I mean, 270 to 347. Mm -hmm. So considering the score, the uh, yardage difference is not that great. Seth Adams adds the Financial Plus Credit Union extra point. They belong to you, and that's the plus at Financial Plus Credit Union in Peru, Ottawa, Mendota, Morris, and Diamond. 4.14 to go in this one. It is Morris 42 and uh, LP 17.
Again, we'll have seen bead football tomorrow, two o'clock kickoff. Cavaliers and four or uh, Bruins and Forreston. Class 1A playoff matchup. Yeah, I may head over to the academy to see tomorrow's game. That'd be uh, kind of yeah. a nice thing to do out there. I would think some LP players probably would yeah. as well on a nice Saturday afternoon to go check out a playoff game close to home. Again, Marquette is home as well tomorrow. Marquette's got a 1 o'clock kickoff against Morrison in Ottawa at Gould Field. Uh, all the other local games uh, happening tonight. Seneca, LP, Ottawa. Hall and Princeton. Princeton a win. Hall and Ottawa go down. Seneca looks to be uh, on their way to a victory. Yeah, another fly joining the ranks here right in front of me, Mike. It's, <laughs> it's kind of just wiggling around. Uh, well, they're on their last legs here. Yeah, oh, I don't know what it Adams is. Adams into the end zone once again. Another uh, touchback. He's not flying away, so I'll... Uh, Try to set him free here. <laughs> You're too kind. <laughs> so another touchback for Seth Adams. First and 10 LP at their own 20. Or first and 10 Morris at their own 20. Yep. Four, just over four minutes left in the game. Morris try to just run this clock out here. Oh, they bring the quarterback back in. Hmm. Button. Hmm. He apparently didn't like LP putting up some points. So let's see if the Cavalier defense can still keep him off. The They're going to throw. And uh, Button with a quick throw to the receivers. We'll see if it's Zweers or not. Couldn't quite tell. No. Looked like maybe uh, Matt Stark, number 18. So perhaps Morris is saying, well, if you're going to keep your first-string defense in LP, we'll bring <laughs> our first-string offense back in for some reason. Nine yards on the pass yeah, to start. Yeah, there's really no uh, point, honestly. As Weirs is out there, Schwartz is out there. So Morris had their – now they are taking a lot of time. I'll give them that. They're not in any hurry. But uh, they brought all their starters back in on offense here. And they'll run with shorts. And he's going to be brought down by three or four LP defenders. Yeah, I see Creed McCormick yep, with the uh, arms right around uh, the running back. And Tony Rodriguez there. Andres Medina as well for the Cavaliers. And uh, Rodriguez will get a nice applause. Antonio finishing a fantastic season. Leading tackler for the LP Cavaliers. Probably will see his name on the all-conference list. Yeah, he was a solid defender uh, yep. every game that we uh, we saw. He's player of the game uh, recently. And uh, he's getting some college looks as well. I saw recently he was uh, visiting Augustana. Okay. Uh, very, a very good Division three program from back in my neck of the woods of the Quad Cities. The Vikings. Kind of goes along with my ex vike uh, license plate that I got there. Yes. That's back uh, my alma mater, Augustana. And they will run it up the middle again. Oh, and, look at this uh, blocking here on the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big guy for yeah, Morris. Yeah, I was going to say, Morris guy has to outweigh the LP player by at least 100 pounds out <laughs> there. <laughs> look like. Uh, Nick Perry at 290. Yeah, he's a he's an all-conference type player, too. And um, number 26 for the Cavaliers, Landon Giles at 170. So. My alma mater, uh, the Moline Maroons, advancing with a 21-13 win over DeKalb. Of course, DeKalb, former conference team, yeah. the Barbs. That's a tough opening round for Moline. Yeah. Of course, DeKalb changed to that uh, DeKalb. Con or, uh, De uh, yeah, they were kind of growing, and they kind of yeah. outgrew uh, teams like Morris yeah. and LP in Ottawa. They're a 7A school now. Yeah, they Same are with Yorkville. Same with Yorkville. They got yep. 
the enrollment just ballooned. Okay, Oops. number 45, Mo Medina, Medina uh, coming out of the game. Bright future ahead for him. Absolutely. We're down to a minute to go here. Second down in five for Morris. Oh, Zweers is finally out of the game. <laughs> yeah. Been a heck of a player all season long, and uh, he has done a lot of damage against LP in their two games. And uh, they'll hand it oh. off. <laughs> right up the middle, bodies just kind of tumbling down. Yeah, that's uh, Warren Mowicki all over that play. So that could be probably one more snap here. And it looks like we're going to have a 42. Gunner Scoog coming in for uh, Mason Lynch. Fantastic game by Lynch, yep. of course. Yep. Mason doing a little bit of everything tonight for the Cavaliers. So that's it. Morris with the win over LP, 42 to 17. We'll come back with post-game coverage after this on 103.9 WLPO. When you need commercial and industrial equipment repair, think Full Circle Industrial. FCI specializes in rebuilding speed reducers and gearboxes. They repair and rebuild all types of pumps and heavy equipment too. You break it, Full Circle will fix it. The techs at Full Circle have more than 75 years combined experience. Put that experience to work for you. Search Full Circle Industrial in Oglesby and see everything FCI can do for you today. For plumbing, heating, cooling, generators, and appliances, think Grazier's Plumbing and Heating in McNabb. Whether you run cold or hot, Grazier's will make sure your home is always just the right temperature. And for those cold winter nights, or when the power's out, and Grazier's does boilers too. Gotta call Grazier's 882211. 